I said, if I go to prison, I'm going to blow all the dudes the first day. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hola, mis amigos. You're listening to Oh My God, Hi, Hijo de Dios. Hola. With me, George Lopez. Porque sabes que? Let's do the show. Porque I got a lot of things. I got to go to that dry cleaner right here by Kim Phelps. Se pegó la cabeza. I got to go get some Neo Spore and Paul. Do you know what George is? Oh, I'm sure he's around here somewhere. What's his name? George. Lopez. George Lopez. Oh, my God. OMG. OMG. Hi. Oh, my God. Hi. Support for the Oh My God High podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's trimming below the base champion groomers of the world. Manscaped offers precision engineering for you and the family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the new Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0. And join over 2 million worldwide who trust Manscaped with the exclusive offer for you 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code OMG High at Manscape.com. You seen one of these things, Gil? Never. Put that microphone right there. I didn't get when did the? Uh, I don't. I, when did marijuana? When did, when did drug testing in workplace start? When people started to not show up or what? Probably. It's <laughs> <laughs> been gone two days. It's like um, you, you in Vietnam. Well, it's a personal question. Vietnam, no. In, in Vietnam, I, I I didn't touch this stuff, but. In Vietnam, you could buy a pack of cool cigarettes. It came in a cigarette pack. They would just fill them up. They'd empty out the tobacco, tobacco, fill it with weed, reseal the package, and sell them. They were, <laughs> they were easy. Vietnam. It was Crazy easy. Time. If they would have had this in Vietnam, they would have said, listen, what are we fighting for? <laughs> <laughs> you guys get one. You guys get some. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a little chinita down there. Hey. Stop that kid from fucking crying. We're going to give, give you one of these. They would have been in, in, in it, Mimi's mode real It would have been peace in the valley. Yep. The helicopters just flying into each other. <laughs> this thing right here, the first cassette tape I ever saw, my friend Andy pulls up. He's playing Cat Scratch Fever. I'm like, what's that? And the A-track was bigger. This was his brother Raymond's car. Smaller thing in there. And he takes, he hits it and it ejects. I go, what's that? First time ever. He goes, it's, it's a, it's called a cassette tape. Like you put it in there, it's got two sides, and you know how a track you have to wait till the yeah. song's over, or if you know halfway during the a song on number four, if you click it to number one, the, <laughs> like your favorite song will be started. Like you yeah. know all the dynamics, and he put it in there. Never seen a cassette, and when these dudes were using this last week on your podcast. <laughs> I I I couldn't I couldn't fucking believe what I was seeing. That's it, yeah. It those things are devastating, man. Especially when you use flour, right? Like we use it. We use. Can we open it up? Can we open it? When, what, what we're still talking about? No. Yeah. I mean, when like when we use it, we use yeah. it with the concentrates. I guarantee you, you're gonna have to wipe call you to come and pick you up. Man. <laughs> 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 oh. I got. I want to. I want to do it. It's justice, but this is, uh, all right, where's your man? Hey, we'll see it. <laughs> help him out, Pedro. Yeah, like Pedro, help him out, eh? Listen, so yeah, t look, d uh, B, tell him what's in here, bro, because you know, I was the kind of kid since I was the only child and I hardly got presents that I would break the fucking thing trying to open it. Right. So One fucking wing of the plane, cracked. So what Pedro's taking out now is the base of the gravity bong, right? The gravity and, bong. And, and, and the two glass pieces are called bulbs. Right, and those are big ones. They make slightly smaller ones, but those these ones are the the primaries right here, right? And water goes on the bottom one because you're going. What you're going to do to get the smoke to come out of it is flip it. Okay. And and the pressure from the water coming down makes the smoke, um, you know, the pre pressurize and come through the come through the bulb, and then it, it, and, and then when you flip it again, it pushes the smoke out. Of the tube, you know what I mean, and then it's go time. This, this thing is, <laughs> this thing is the craziest. You understand that, like water pressure and yeah, it's, the it's pressure amounts itself. The water pushes it out. Yeah, it's a high tech gravity bomb, and you could use this one with uh, for with flour, right? It's got a bowl for flowers right there, which is that's the one. And like when you when you want to rock the flour, you want to put a little bit in there. You don't want to put a lot of flour because every time you flip it, it's just going to get more stale. 
you oh. sort of want to put a little bit of flour and then flip it as many times to snap that. Look at Gil's face. Bowl. He's like, I wish I had my fucking hand coat. But if you oh, put no. a lot of flour in there, <laughs> if you put a lot of flour in there and you flip that, it's going to create a lot of, <laughs> it's going to be milky. And whoever takes that, <laughs> milky. sleep, sleep for the rest yeah. of the day. Hey, could I put this on in my, my bedroom at night and just. Keep yeah, flip it until I pass out. Fuck yeah, you can. <laughs> you man. could, right? Yeah, it's gonna go into the air. Absolutely, Papa. That can that... be like lights out. <laughs> Fucking dog. People knocking. Your dogs are in the street. Hey, <laughs> people come to the studio and they want to, you know, try this, right? And most often than not, they they need to sit down for a while. Yeah, maybe take a little nappy nap before they. <laughs> they leave. I mean, listen, man. Even, if you have to take a nappy nap, you're fucked up. Even some of our guys. Have been put out by this, like Ezo. Yeah. He's he's put himself out with one of these right here, with but with concentrate. What is, it? is it like IKEA where it doesn't have all the parts? Yep. And uh, so or there's something. There, there, for, oh, no, right? No, no, everything's good. But for concentrates, we use a thing called the Connect, a G Pen Connect, right? And oh it's yeah. A, that little square battery and a little, it's a little tube for the concentrate. We use it with with this, right? That's what really puts people out that shit right there like the flower does too but that right there is like that's when it puts guys on our our, our couch of comfort yeah right where you feel like you can fall asleep on that couch and you're safe nobody's gonna draw on your face it's like a <laughs> sanctuary you know what i'm saying anyone who falls asleep on this couch cannot you know we don't fuck with them only the, the only thing that gets that happens to them is maybe an inconvenient photograph you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. we don't allow the writing on the face because we're grown ass men. And Did we'll you ever hear fighting. that story? Like somebody got their house broken into, and then there was a camera there, and the guys that were robbing robbing them took pictures of their werewolves and put like <laughs> their tooth, <laughs> their toothbrushes <laughs> in their culo, and they oh, left the man. camera back there. Oh, yeah. They didn't take the camera. They when they developed the film, you see oils with a oral <laughs> bee sticking out of it. Oh and guys, man, well, they're nuts. <laughs> they're going. Up, they're doing a they lot. They went crazy. They just put the camera back. That was before you. Know, yep. You could do that now. Fucking no, a. <laughs> the uh, is it considered a hookah? You can use it for a hookah too. You you, you know, know you could you could you could use it for three different things, right? You could use it for the flower right there. You can use it for um the concentrate and it comes with the hookah adapter. So if you wanted to rock the hookah, you could. This is almost some shit that Bugs Bunny would have, you know. Yeah. Like Marvin the Martian <laughs> go to Marvin, his, yeah. into his house and you got one of these on there. Fuck yeah. And Different. even it has an adjustable, you see everybody? Yeah. Yep. Look at that. If you want to bring it down to your level. You know what else it comes with is a wall mount. Oh. So if you want to fucking <laughs> wound it up, <laughs> mount it on your wall, in your garage, papa, while you're doing work, and you need to work on yourself too, you know it comes with a wall mount. <laughs> you better you're in the house right here. <laughs> Next to the paper towels. <laughs> what the fuck are you looking for? I'm looking for that fucking hookah. <laughs> It's up behind you. What the fuck? <laughs> hey, put that shit on the wall. Keep fucking losing it. <laughs> Man. They've thought of everything. I, uh, they, they have thought of everything. <laughs> when I was, I did his podcast last week, Gil, and uh, I, I, uh, I don't really s smoke a lot of marijuana. But when you cough, I guess you get high faster. That's what they say. Yeah. Do you agree or disagree? I think you get high faster either way. Cough or no cough. It's just... You know, I think psychologically, you're coughing, and you know, when you cough or sneeze, you cut the oxygen off to the head, right? No wonder I get so, 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 so yeah, you might get a little higher from that, but let me ask you a question How many years were, were you on the force, Sheriff? 38. 38 years. In your 38 years, if you walked into a house and it smelled like weed, are you thinking guilty? Oh, I know there's weed. I don't think, y'all, I'm not hooking anybody. <laughs> huh? Because you would say, you know, you had to try to, because back then, they didn't when have. I, when I first went out, weed was a felony when I first yeah. hit the streets. Fuck. That's crazy. And these dudes had to do detective where there was no DNA. You, back in the in 70s, you could fucking shit on somebody and they go, hey, I'm not going to look at the dead body until you take that shit off him. And now <laughs> they find a hair yeah. in the carpet. Technology, man. It made it made their that part of their job a little bit easier. Right? Yeah, I, I couldn't 
say this publicly, but if yeah, I had could, somebody, you could you just scare to, the repercussions? If, if, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't look good. Bring, bring it, bring it back in here. If, if I'm supporting Alex uh, for sheriff, and oh. then me talking stuff like that. But it's legal though. But back then, when I went out, right, uh, I didn't pop people. Weed to me was nothing. You know, I, yeah. I really didn't. It, you do it, hey. I drink, I drank, did shit before I was twenty. Hey, just toss it in the Put gutter. Away, yeah, get it, get out of here. He was one of those good, you know. <laughs> I, I really didn't. Good I to had, know, good cops. to know guys. <laughs> that you know, you, you don't have, you didn't have to try to jump your back wall. You know, yeah, your car pull up. Yeah, if you saw if you saw him coming, you know you could talk. You to could, him. yeah, yeah. And that really? that, that, that goes a long way. That goes yeah. a very long way because there's, you know, like when you're in the street in the hood, you know, you see certain cops pull around the corner that you know right because you've dealt with them before or they have a reputation you're either running or you're gonna right. you're gonna you you know that you can have a conversation that's with why them. i became a cop the cop that used to have a conversation with the cop that wanted to help out the cop, and i know now he was a great cop you know he still used to pat us down shake it, but i thought it was all just part of a game that guy was good the other guy robles who was a good street cop <laughs> yeah but you'd say, hey, who is it? It's Robles. Bam, oh, like rats. Everybody would run. Out of here. Wow. Yeah, Everybody would run. Because, you know, like, you know, I came up gang banging, right? And uh, all of us knew the certain names of the certain cops that would be the ones patrolling our hoods. Right. And we knew the ones that we had to run from because they, they were going to come break our balls. And we knew the ones that we could talk to because they weren't looking just for, like, some petty shit to lock you up for. They were coming to have like a rapport with you, and and so they they were kind of cool. They they would check you now and then to let them know, hey, listen, right, this is what it is. We'll fuck you up right now. We'll we'll put you in this car and take you down. But if you're cool, let's just have a conversation, right? And you know, sometimes it, we knew those guys. We knew who we could talk to and who we definitely didn't want to talk to. Was that part of a strategy as a police officer, or is that the guy's personality? Personality. Like, he was that way in high school, yeah, part yeah, football. You know, treat, it's something you learn, treat people the way you like to be treated. That, that's all. It was It was really simple. If you had to go to jail, you wanted to go in my car. You didn't want to go in anybody else's car. I've had murder suspects talk to my wife on a phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they squeal, hey, you know, your old man, he's the chaos. Yep. You know, and... That's good. I buy burritos for the guys. You're going to jail. Hey, why'd you buy them a burrito? You ain't gonna get this shit in there. <laughs> hey man, you know, I'll tell you, there was a guy. There was That's a true. there was an officer Clarkson. I don't remember his first name. Officer Clarkson. Anytime this dude came around, it was it it was like a gamble. You either ran or you 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 sat there and talked to him. He wasn't going to ask you anything that was going to compromise you, but he was checking the pulse of every neighborhood. Right, he wasn't because he, he knew nobody was gonna give him any information, but he could at least check the pulse. Right, and every now and then when he'd come, guys would what run, and he knew all of us. So, you know, because we all had a profile, so he knew who ran and who didn't. So the next time he'd roll up, he'd let you know, hey, what'd you run from me last time for? Right, come the fuck over here. <laughs> right and stuff like that and but he would he would treat you fairly but he would make sure and check sure. you to let you know you know don't fuck around and uh he was ice cold we all respected him we didn't like him but re we respected him enough to be like okay don't run from this motherfucker because he may catch us slipping somewhere else and it's it's going to be awful next time right. so let's just Let's just be cool right here. And he, he sometimes he was cool, sometimes. And I think I think it's a cat. You know, first of all, there's a cat and a mouse game played mm -hmm. in crime. Sure, yeah, no doubt. It's a game okay. of clue. Okay. Oh, and there's when when did good cop bad cop start? When do you mm -hmm. think that that felt? I think that, that's from been the there way forever, back. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I don't. It was there before I got there. You need a you need a guy who's acting like he's sympathizing with you while his partner is grilling the fuck out of you. Amazing. Because it, it, it might break you down. Not every it doesn't nope. work for everybody, but it might break it works, some right, people with, down. It works. It, it works with new guys. Fish. 
veteranos, you know, guys that have been through a system, they don't give a shit. It's almost like dudes that are homosexual. They go, hey, are you the pitcher or the catcher? That's what they say. And a good cop, bad cop, which one are you? Which one are you? Well, a good cop, taking it right there for the bad cop. Yeah, <laughs> but they, it, it's been a role. It's since, been a role, yeah. it's, and it's uh, it's psychological. Yeah, it is. Because one one cop can't do it on its on his own. No, dude doesn't want to talk. It's it's like parents do to their kids. But completely. <laughs> you know what I'm Fuck! I told you no. <laughs> oh shit! There he goes. <laughs> Say no. <laughs> and that never happens. In good cop in the marriage. Well, I had, I had to, I got divorced. I'm the, I had to be the bad I, cop. I think to, for it to be balanced, you have to like, you know, switch, divide it. Yeah, switch it out sometimes. Do you see that played? You guys played that, right? Sure. And are you trying to get a confession? You're trying to get names from other people? Because what were you? You're just trying to solve the crime, right? Trying we're, to solve the case. we're just trying to get information out of them. Whether it's a confession. Get them to roll over on somebody. Give us something that we don't know about. That that's what you're trying. But that good cop, bad cop, only works when you're dealing with new gangsters. Yeah. You know, youngsters right. that haven't been through been through the system. Once they've been through a system, they'll look or, at you and they'll yeah. laugh. Or just people that aren't necessarily in the criminal lifestyle, but they fucked up somewhere. You know, out of a bad decision. Yeah, yeah. Those those folks would break real quick like that. Because it, it, they're not career criminals. Do you remember? Right. Do, That's right. Right. Because they're, they're yeah. They don't. They don't want to be. They're not career criminals, and, and they don't want to go to jail. Yeah. This is all new to them. They're scared. They're scared shitless. What was the worst time for gang banging and crime in Los Angeles, or or you know around the country? Because because I remember when they said, "Don't flash your lights." If somebody's driving around oh, at yeah. night and the light, your the lights of a car that are was off. In the nineties, right? Yeah. Yeah. Don't hit your high beams because that car will come around and they were shooting people. Yeah, because that was flashing like their high beams. initiations for some gangs with that, right? In the 70s in East L.A., that was the gang capital of the nation. Right. I had Geraldo Rivera riding around with me on oh, Nightline, boy. you know, during in the <laughs> 70s doing stuff on gangs. And so that was it. Then as time progressed and they had gangs in the South End, in South Central, yeah. And, and the Crips and the Bloods were just starting back then, but they weren't organizing. They were bad. These the guys from Selly were bad. They 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 were tough as nails. And you go down to the South Side, and they'd give up their mother. That's yeah. where that's where you. They got, you could just call them a fink. It's a rata. Hey, it's, it's, right. So South. Where did you start? In, yeah, in South Central. In South Central. There. Yeah. They, but they, that but it's true. I mean it's it's really true like in in terms of of the lack of organization. Right. You know, it just wasn't there. There was no protocols. You know, some guys stood hard in the paint, you know, mm -hmm. and gave up nothing, but other guys definitely wow. did. Then as they started progressing, everybody became more educated and every they became more sophisticated in everything they were doing and it became harder and harder. Uh, through the 80s to solve murders because they became transient and they were doing stuff. Yeah. They were doing sophisticated shit then. But let's say like in Beretta, remember Beretta? <laughs> had, had the of the Keep your eye on this barrel. Rooster. Remember he had Rooster? Yeah, yeah. He had Rooster. Rooster was the rat, he was the rat that he'd go over there and lean on his car and he's like, hey man, we're not supposed to even be talking, you know? Remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. And, he, and Rooster was the guy that was that was flipping over, turning over on every week. There's always See somebody Rooster. in there like that. Yeah. In every bottle there's somebody like that. You seem... I guess people, oh man, what's more, what what gives you more street cred to not roll over on somebody and then do your time and then get out? You got to be a king. Yeah, if you I do mean, that. In, in the street, yeah, I mean, you know, it's valuable because they know they could trust you if they're doing the same shit you're doing. You know, you know, you could trust somebody because they didn't roll over. Marijuana being a felony, okay. How do we get marijuana being a felony to? being legal smarter do, people but smarter people than I, me you know I, I think you know that's attributed to you know people like educating themselves about cannabis and and you know throughout um the I time cannabis you call it weed weed marijuana whatever okay, cannabis. that's like if you call a girl like you go ah she's all right but if you say <laughs> she's gorgeous yeah cannabis is gorgeous and weed is ah she's all right yeah. So I think we let's call it cannabis, cannabis because all good. Cannabis. it's beautiful. But you know, like people got educated about it and they figured out okay, like a lot of people are going to jail for this particular 
um, plant, which is nowhere near the 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 other drugs that that are available to people out there. And you know, I think they they also educated themselves on the possibilities and the economics of it, and what what it can actually do for people right. in terms of the medicinal part. So people that didn't necessarily smoke. They were like looking at that as as an alternative. People that don't want to pop pills and do all this other shit, you know, they they found the properties that they can use in cannabis to, you know, use as their therapy or their medication, right? Their medicine. And more and more people just did the diligence and said, okay, how do we pass this so that people stop going to jail for this plant? and that we can actually start using it as medicine without right. being prosecuted for it and that we can create industry from it because we know that you know it creates um revenue like no other business yet you know we get taxed like crazy out here in cali but you know it's it's a business like no other and um i think people started recognizing that you know in the early 2000s like in the 90s, we all talked about it. You know, a lot of us that, that were in hip hop, we talked about right. it freely. We were putting it out there. But I think in 2000, when, when as technology starts to develop and um, information is more accessible, people got in the know like, oh, well, this shit ain't so bad. We need to rally around this. And people did, and here we are. With the Some people made a, Snoop I mean, Dogg. A, Snoop Dogg made this shit popular. A felony. These about those right here. I mean, you and, know, they, and, and it's not it's not feral anymore. Like like weed would just be, you you didn't know where it came from. Maybe it was Thai stick or Acapulco or some shit, some name they had for it back in the day, seventies around high school. Yeah. Um, so you didn't know if it was gonna make you paranoid, if it was gonna put you yeah. to sleep. <laughs> there's no information. There's no information on it. One time on a Sunday, I got invited to go to a barbecue in Simi Valley, and the 118 wasn't totally up yet. So me and another guy were were, were smoking and driving, and it's so long to go to see uh, to see me that I got paranoid and I started crying, and that dude had to take me home all from all from half a joint. I was driving and thinking, then I started getting sad. He went to last. Then, I would have laughed. At him. <laughs> I would have, I would have, you said, I, I said, if I go to prison, I'm going to blow all the dudes the first day. <laughs> <laughs> who wants someone back? Who wants seconds tomorrow? <laughs> Fuck, I said, that motherfucker's crazy, eh? Yeah. <laughs> that motherfucker suck. Everybody's guards, I bet fucking sucked at that from the, li from the linen, eh? When the guy was leaving. <laughs> Go leave him alone. I'm about to, God damn, you thought Benson. I'm about to blow it. No, but you give him the food, but I just slide another. He'll blow you. <laughs> The uh, I wouldn't I would not last in, in I was I was always afraid. I hung around with guys that were tougher, but I was always afraid of them. I, I told you that time they pulled a gun on me. I fucking went home and pulled the covers over my head. You know, sometimes being afraid will keep you out of trouble. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's Some sure. of us that weren't so afraid, man, we got in <laughs> so much fucking trouble. Yeah. And uh, you know, but hey, it was a learning experience. Did you drop out of high school? Yeah, I did. What do you, what what to, what did your parents say to you? What what, what what do you say to a kid now? Let's say a kid is, like, I, let's say it has to be underage, because a lot of them are underage and smoke weed. As a parent, if you're trying to get, get through to your kid as a parent, because what would you say is good advice for a parent to tell their kid about all this? You know, I think they have, have to have a, a respectful conversation. I mean, I know you're the parent, right? Right. And uh, as <laughs> now I'm 50, I'm a parent, right? right. Um, you have to have that respect and, and, and know that kids these days are very smart. You know, they, they have access to, to, to information we did not have. Right. So talking to them is much easier than it was for our parents to talk to us because they had old, outdated, shitty information. What about the one where you think that was effective, <laughs> where they had the frying pan and they put the egg in there? That helped, did that help you? <laughs> that or? just made us hungry. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> It's like, damn, don't we got any that, eggs in the refrigerator? Hey, right that, now? <laughs> that was the that was the anti drug campaign. Yeah, here's yeah. your brain. Yeah, here's your brain on drugs. I I think kids these days are willing to have that conversation if if you have a a decent enough relationship with your kids. If you don't, someone else is gonna get. You you're not, give them that you know, as a parent, you have to realize that you're not always right. Right. You have to be flexible. Absolutely. And you may have to accept what he's putting out. If you don't have, if you haven't done your homework, then you 
have to accept what he says and maybe do a little more research, but just to come out and say no, that's evil. Well, then you're bucking heads, and he's gonna do what he yeah. wants. Yeah. At anyway. what point do you, at what point would you lose your your child? Where your dad? You see the movies where dads, you know, they, it's it's they when start. you're restricting them and stopping them from doing some shit without any information or explanation as to why. And in the the conversation that happens back and forth, there, you know, if if you're not given any information or anything that's relatable that they can say, you know what, I understand. If you're just saying no, and and listen, I'm your parent. I don't right. need to fucking tell you why. I know what's good for you. You've lost them right there. That or you know, just not hate them. You know, you're right. You have you have, but maybe it's time to emancipate. You know. It, Really? I just don't want this going on in my house. Really? Yeah, I, I don't. I, I, if I got to the point where it's, it's still my, still wow, my world, man. still my house, and I lay down the law here, I understand you want to do what you want to do, but I can't have that in my house. And wow. I would just, I love you, I respect you, but the respect I'm asking for you in return is not in my house. And I'd stand firm. Wow, dude. Emancipation. If that's what that's what they took. And you know, some kids Wow man. they want that. You know, because they might not be in a situation where they feel their parents are ever gonna understand who they are. Right. And what they need and you know, in terms of support and you know, um, do you realize that if you were Britney Spears' dad, she could still be touring right now? Oh, with fuck. all her money, no beef with her dad. Her dad got all her money. Yeah, yeah. But, but like that, yeah. right? When you're talking to, yeah, because once it becomes just no all the time, yeah, then you're gonna, yeah, you've lost them. Yeah, you, you've lost. And them. I think they love you always because you're the parent. But when they don't respect you, no, yeah. without a reason, you <clears> lost <throat> them. Yeah, straight no, up, without a reason, you lost them. Right. And that, what? you know, that's happened to a lot of us, you yeah. know, uh, don't do this. Why? Don't right. worry about why. Don't do it. Well, fuck. What's what do they say? Right. What's the, been the oldest saying? Curiosity kills the cats. That's right. right. Some of the cats live. My daughter yeah. asked me. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. yeah a, a lot of cats came back off, dented it up. And with tattoos. Fuck at one ear. <laughs> My daughter asked me, dad, when this log cause it looks like it's going to pass, are you going to, oh. are, are you going to try weed? And I said, I'm gonna start growing this shit in my backyard. I said, we'll have it here for everybody if you want. And she said, are you serious? I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I... You know what's awesome is, you know, I watch a lot of different stuff on YouTube. Manscaped, I saw this guy. So I'm supportive of the Oh My God High podcast is brought to you by Manscaped. Engineer tools to protect your family jewels. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping. Listen, imagine shaving with a sleek, well-designed, optimized trimmer that makes shaving time your favorite time in the bathroom. I've tried the new 4.0 and I'm blown away by the performance. The craftsmanship and the details of 4.0 are on the next level. And I've had an accident where I had a nick. Listen, if you have a nick here, you think those things don't stop bleeding? I was with a young lady, and she said, oh, my God, you're dying. I had nicked one of my testicles with something that wasn't Manscaped. That's not going to happen again. Manscaped is engineered for the ultimate growing and body trimmer by focusing on the intelligent function, engineering an ultimate growing and body trimmer by focusing on the functionality. Featured cutting-edge ceramic blade and reduced grooming accidents to their advanced skin safe technology and now you can feel comfortable shaving the boys. The uh, upgrade trimmer includes a multifunction on and off switch that can engage a travel lock because hey, I'm gonna tell you, you know how important that is? It can engage a travel lock. If you've ever had a tooth, electronic toothbrush go off in your suitcase, they'll pull you in and put their fist in your culo before they find out that you left your uh, toothpaste on. Now they have an engaged lock that you can travel with so that doesn't happen. So it also gives you the ability to turn uh, uh, 4,000K, it's an LTD spotlight that they have, on and off when you need a more precise shave. Uh, the upgrade trimmer gives you a multifunction on and off switch 
Um, the Lawn Mower 4.0 even allows you to customize your trim through additional guard lengths with sizes between one through four. Now, you see the way my hair is right now? That's a four. But when I look clean, I look tight, I'm one. And the 4.0 even allows you to customize everything. Did I mention that the, it's wireless charging? Your balls never had it so good. And pops, number one. Uh, the new wireless charger system uses electron. El- the new wireless system charges... The new wireless charging system use electromagnetic induction, which can help battery life last longer. If only we had it that good. Hey, treat your huevos like I treat my huevos and go Manscaped. And get 20% off free shipping with the code OMGHI at manscaped.com. If you're even not, if you're like listening, you're like, "Ah, I don't know. If you don't know... It's better to know than not to know. And your webbles will thank you, and your lady will thank you. Oh, my God. I, I said, but. I'm going to get you kind of that right there. I, I don't care. Follow your friends. I don't care who does it. You know, I'm not a prude. Right. And I don't give a shit. My kids do. I, I, don't, I really don't care. And, and to tell you the truth, I don't do it because I don't have the webbles. Because and your wife too. I saw your wife in a documentary. She said, I can get you a triple through a fucking closet. <laughs> she don't mess around, huh? She's a lady yeah. that she's a she's a lady, but and she's got her to you know for no she doesn't smoke, but got her to take a little bit of uh, CBD. What's the, the ecstasy? What the fuck's that? Acid. The, Heroin? The jelly shit, the candy, the oh, jelly oh, the gummies. shit, gummy, gummies, gummy, gummy bears. That's the name of your line. The jelly shit, <laughs> the gummies, the gummy bears. You know, for, yeah, for pain, absolutely. And and my, I won't mention his name, but my doctor said, hey, I give it to my mother. Yeah, this my med- my medical medical chingon. You know, because I use this for my mother. Yeah, and so there's got to be something to it. After 38 years of being a cop and 38 years of being a virgin to this shit, right? I'm, you know, I'm like a little kid. I want to try it that first time, but there's a stigma. But I think that if you ever listen, if you were gonna fly, you'd want to fly with like Chuck Yeager, <laughs> or <laughs> if you're gonna play <laughs> baseball and you go, well, you know, I'm gonna need to get you a hitting coach, Mickey Mantle, come over here. So if you were, if you were gonna try marijuana, the equivalent of Mickey Mantle, Chuck Yeager. Uh, uh, if you wanted uh, Microsoft, Bill, Bill Gates to help you with your homework, the about the right here is the Leonardo <laughs> like I da Vinci. Can, I, I can see he's the, bringing out this to me the this Toki future Toki. shit. <laughs> I mean, this is something from Star Wars. Here's fucking well, Han well, Solo you know, right like here. That, that, that's the thing, you know. <clears throat> since when it became legal here and in other places, you had the people that were already, you know, in the culture, right? That build up a tolerance they can smoke anything and it's they're going to always be mm-hmm. level right um but there's others that are curious about it i'm like oh well it's legal i'll try it for the first time and if they go into a spot where the the bud tenders aren't giving them the education like asking them so are right. you a first time smoker you know or right or veteran smoker, whatever question you would ask to know what to like suggest to them because some people come in knowing exactly what they want, right? But other people that, you know, are just starting or they're just trying it one time for the first time or whatever, they'll come in with questions and the butt tenders- get a little bit of a headache. Yeah, all right on. <laughs> 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 and, and, the, and the butt tenders gotta be able to answer those <clears throat> questions. So if they're like a first time smoker and they're asking, hey, what this is my first time what should i try i don't want to feel this way right right? and if the bud tender knows what's what's happening they'll give them something that's good but light so they don't have a bad experience because you don't ever want to give anybody a bad experience you want them to you know embrace it and if they should try and if they come back they come yeah, back and if they oh, don't yeah. they tried hey, it for with one my time. fucking luck i tried some of that shit my swag and i would come back uh, <laughs> the mother-in-law came back with a curtain yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, you're blowing my high right now uh, <laughs> you're time to you're gonna get fucking emancipated right now. <laughs> hey so so i'm gonna say that i believe that 100 percent of what you said i think that's yeah. education is a thing but as this starts to grow and as it starts to spread, then the, the culture has a responsibility to make sure that 
when somebody goes in there for the first time and says, hey, you know, what do you want to try? That that person behind the counter knows what they're, knows what they're talking about. Absolutely. I think the biggest I think the biggest divide is that if you've never been with it and it's legal now, I think you're going to be against it naturally. But also, I don't think if somebody would talk to that person, they might come around and say, yeah, okay. Yeah, they might lower the guard. Yeah, and, <clears throat> and I want to reiterate, I'm not against it at all. And, and the only reason I don't is all these guys that I work with for years, you know, they're just, oh, now you're one of them. <laughs> yeah. and, and I just don't want to stick. Yeah. And I know that half the guys I worry about, I know they're doing this shit. Yeah. I mean that that right. they just don't talk about it. Hey, right? cops cops are people too, <laughs> in spite yeah. of what others might think. Yeah, and and they don't want to be popping the pills either. Right, you know. So if cannabis um, works to whatever shit there's, you know, having to take these pills for, they'll take the cannabis. I mean, there was a a dispensary in Roseman, um, you know, out there towards uh, what, uh, Lancaster, or whatever, yeah. and. Uh, L.A. sheriffs would go buy their cannabis there. They didn't want to be seen buying cannabis in, in L.A. shops because, you know, right. it's places they patrol and shit like that. So they would go, some of them would go buy their cannabis up there. And, you know, it was medicine for them. So it's... it's When I was in uh, Laughlin, they have a big store there. And I was after some uh, ointment, yeah. not the oil, but the ointment. The I'll tell you how old Gil is. It was the ointment. Yeah, this is some <laughs> liniment. Liniment shit. And I went in, you, you know, you sat there, then they called you in. You go inside the store, locked doors, a lot of people inside. Uh, what do you call them? The Dispensary? The, the, yeah. Collective? The, the people that are selling the shit. Oh, the bud tenders, yeah. The bud tenders. Bunch of bud tenders in there. Is that, is that the description of it? Like, if yeah. I look in the paper for a job and it said bud tender? Yeah. You're, that's yeah, a, that is a, you're like, now. The counter guy? Instead of a cashier, they're called bud tenders. Okay. And so I go in this place. And I felt like, man, people are watching me. You know, I'm, I'm a yeah, mom. You know, and I'm already retired. But I mean, I know. But let me tell you, if you're already paranoid like that, you don't need weed. You're already, <laughs> you're already fucking tripped out with never trying it. So, listen, buddy. If I, if you and I were together, you go, George. I watch it. But hey, you know what? You're already fucking crazy right now. I think you're not gonna get any of these. <laughs> he's next to you. Know, he's, already, crying. he's already looking over his shoulder and start crying, driving. And, but, 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 I would say that. <clears throat> like that because you know never really doing it myself but I, I like it but I don't I don't do much of it because I, I can't handle a lot of it but I know how good it is medically and I think hey all my grandma used to have a bottle of alcohol that was old oh yeah, with yeah. leaves in it yeah. and that's what that's what it that's what it that's yeah. what it is right yeah yeah people would use it on their joints and, and shit like that um it's old school. Yeah, I, I remember it, seeing my grandmother with it, too. My grandma put it on her knees, and she goes, George, can you go to the AM, PM, and, and with nice 45 corn dogs at a full 45 piece? I'm starting to get a little bit hungry. I got to be fucking tearing up the kitchen. Like, what the fuck is she doing? Shut the fuck up. She was high on her knees when her elbow, just alcohol in the back of her neck. She works. My, my, uh, fucking very pawn dear. my graduation ring for her, for her Jones, eh? A very dear friend of mine. I don't even know what Jones is. Got, got cancer. You know, he had pancreatic cancer. And a lot of right. pain. And he would say, excuse me. And he wanted, he didn't want to smoke a joint in front of me because he didn't want to disrespect. I said, ain't no disrespect. You're my friend. Smoke. Mm -hmm. Smoke to your heart because that's the only thing that would kill this pain. Right. And he only lasted about two and a half, <laughs> three months. And that's the only thing that kept him going. It's excruciating pain. And <clears throat> I would say that, you know, I... When you see somebody go through that much pain, this is better for them than oh yeah sure than morphine and all the oh, shit yeah. that they use. Because I mean, you could take all those prescription drugs that they give you to suppress any of the shit that you're you know you're trying to get um, you know therapy for whatever you know. Um, but that stuff is really high concentrated, right? The stuff that yes, somebody so, so, would be given some of it, some of a it. lot of it. Some of it's 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 you know highly dosed and stuff because people want more more um, milligrams than others. But the one thing that that we do know is that when you take some of this prescription medication, it may be suppressing the thing that that you're dealing with now, but it creates other problems in your organs and your liver much later. And people are smarter now. They know, like, I don't want to be taking this shit because I know that this is 
you know, this is going to be the death of me. Well, it's supposed to be helping me from this. So, right. you know, more people are willing to, 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 to try different types of things. And cannabis is one of those things where if, if it can treat you medically for whatever you're taking this other bullshit for, people are willing to try it because they know there's no side effects other than the munchies or your high or right. paranoia. But Let, realistically, you're not damaging yourself. You're actually healing yourself. Let's say if you use somebody in their early 70s who never tried uh, weed um, and explain to him the difference between <laughs> who's overweight TV, no no anyway, you're, and, you're, and my family out there you'd be a waif um, the difference between CBD and THC well see C- you know the difference between yes what oh, T- like, T- THC is a, has the cannabis that yeah. would get you high, high. Yeah, that's, yeah. and the TCB has no effects on your Getting your you know, eyes. Latino, they've all, fuck you guys, all this shit wrong. CBD, not TCB. That oh, was take your business. Big off. My grandma was like, well, give me some anvils. The, my grandma couldn't say fucking anvil. <laughs> Everything was a fucking. We were like, you had to figure that shit out. Like, what the and, fuck is she saying? And the tender is the one that explained it to me because I wanted something for arthritis for my right. joint. And he said, well, this one is more potent. And this one is not so much. And so I took the one that was more point, potent, and it works. Yeah. It does. It does work. On my arthritic, on my arth- it, and I'd scream that to the world. It works. Yeah, some people take CBDs with just CBD, no THC, but the one that's more effective is the one that has a, a little bit of both. What if you had guilt to be a spokesperson like Bob is big boy, like put a little plate in his hand like that? <laughs> and it'll have- some cookies out and some weed, like Bob's Big Boy, you would be like that in that outfit right there. But, the, uh, but um, is it consistent? It stays, is it like a pill that it goes away and then you have to redo it? Or would it stay in your system longer or does it completely fade? What do you mean? Uh, yeah. If you the took CBD. the ointment and, and it... And it oh, and well, I mean, like everything, it, you know, it, it it's, it's something you would have to take regularly, like it, you, unless... Does it clear your system completely? If I I never I'll, had to test after it, but here's we, we talked about this this last week when you called me when I was over in Canyon Lake. Yeah, uh, and this motherfucker has a life. Most Chicanos in his age are at home, man. They, they were talking because <laughs> they lean back and the arm things broken, so they push themselves so I'm back. I'm kicking the it. Feet go up. Yeah, the the gummy bears, you know, and they were they were talking about the medicinal stuff, and I just told them that with any pain, you know, medi- even pain medication, whatever you take, you got pain. All of a sudden, it doesn't say, okay, the pain's gone. You just notice sometimes, hey, you, you know, two hours down the road, you're saying, I don't feel that anymore. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's gone. So it doesn't just like turn or, turn the light off or on. It just dissipates. And then you forget when you don't have the pain, you're not worried about it. You're not yeah. thinking about it anymore. It's and out it, of your mind. And it usually lasts the whole day. Okay, yeah. I'm going to tell you a story. My wife used to go to Pebble Beach in the summer, and I would be there working. So one Sunday, I have a brownie. Four times, uh, so I eat a little bit of the brownie at first, and I'm watching TV, and all of a sudden I'm just picking at it. I forgot that it's four times, so I'm just kind of picking at it, and I'm eating it, and then it's empty, and I said, "Oh fuck!" I yeah. ate that whole four times brownie. Remember that that movie Boxing Helena, which just, was just <laughs> yeah, the head? yeah yeah. I was in the bed, and it was just. <laughs> The head would move like this. Like, none of my body would with a fucking uh, ring. And I was just like uh, by myself upstairs. And I was tripping, dude. I could only move my head and try to answer the phone with my mouth. I was, I was fucked up. Baby. Incapacitated. 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 Completely gone. So, all right, that's good. Yeah. That's just good too. Yeah, thing yeah, yeah. Lost. Yeah, like, you know. God, I dance. You know, it's, it's one of those things. Like, these days, you know. The every every single one is dosed properly by any any company, and they'll tell you, okay, the bag in total is X amount milligrams, um, and each one is X amount of milligrams per serving. So you know how much you're taking, right? In the old days, it was like, but you here, know what? I don't have this, but don't eat the whole yeah. thing. And then we ate the whole but thing completely. Remember that? <laughs> the whole thing <laughs> it was on the road. Hey, I don't feel shit. And then you eat the whole fucking thing, and then in 20 minutes, fucked up. Let me tell you, 
I was in Hawaii, I had a house in Hawaii, and I tried to cook in the beginning. It didn't work, I ate another one. So I'm waiting there in front of the restaurant for it to uh, hit, and then it hits. And then an old Asian couple walked out, and to me they looked like cats that were wearing fancy clothes. <laughs> I couldn't fucking stop laughing. They, 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 they had to tell me to, to get out of the restaurant. I just, just, I just saw them as cats walking in. They looked like a, like a, almost like a Valentine's Day card. There was one cat in the tuxedo, the other cat in the dress. And they walked by me, and I just I couldn't stop laughing. The little chinitos were cats dressed up for dinner. But but if somebody if if somebody out there, I think this would probably be the toughest situation if if you had your husband or your wife that was in a lot of pain and you hadn't gone here, you hadn't gone to this yet, and you want to, what's their first, what's the best step for them to start? I mean, that's, you right? know, that's a tough call, situation. Call, call up a friend who knows, yeah, knows call, something about, somebody wise. That's right. You know, like, I call George and say, hey, George, put me in touch with. With somebody who knows. Yeah. Uh, because and, I wouldn't hesitate to give it to my wife, somebody who's in pain. Yeah. Not at all. And then you tell them small doses in the beginning so that they can build their tolerance up and later they take more and it'll be more effective. You know what I mean? But, you know, if you're just doing it recreationally, some people will have half the bag in a day and wow. just be toasted. But, you know, for someone who's just starting, yeah, you call someone who knows, and hopefully the, the bud tender that is dealing with you, if you bought it at a dispensary, um, is most, most especially a licensed one, you should you should buy these at licensed dispensaries. Don't buy them at the shops that are you know licensed. Which, how do you know if it doesn't have a... If it doesn't have a license. Well, you know, most of them. <laughs> How they're selling out of their back door. <laughs> yeah, they're selling. Is that license or not license? <laughs> yeah, well, because there's. The bottle gives you a tire. goes, <laughs> don't look in the tire right now. Let me get out of here. <laughs> well, they're called rogue shops, right? They're, but they can't really, they're, they're not advertised. Like, they might have a small green cross to not, like, you know, have a big ass sign like so and so. But they'll be getting shut down. They're, they'll oh, yeah. be after. Well, they're and supposed they to be, and they should be, and and eventually they will be. But if you go buy anything from there, most likely it's untested, and and maybe the dosage ain't what it says on the bag because it might be a bootleg bag. So, if if you're beginning, best to find yourself a licensed dispensary and go there and ask the bud tender, hey. I'm, you know, beginning. I'm a beginner on this. What should I have, and how many milligrams should I have? Should I start off with? And you know, if they know what the, you know what, if the They're butt business. tender has been trained properly, they'll know what to tell them. You know, but I would say start off low doses. What is a sh shelf life? Um, for edibles, usually they have <laughs> two to hours have like that. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. I mean, these it's hilarious. They, An hour and a half. I, I I believe that there's expiration date on any you know any uh, consumable consumable product. So as long as you have it before then, the THC or the CBDs that are in there are gonna you know they're gonna stay in there because they're they're infused. It's not like flour where you know it might get dry, brittle, and it might lose some mm -hmm. of its impact. Um, this is infused, so it it never does. I mean, I I would suppose you don't want to you know keep it two years and then <laughs> bite into it. <laughs> but does it lose its potency over time? No, no. no. Wow. No, it's infused. It ain't. It's not gonna lose the potency. It's pretty good. I would like to see my grandma and grandpa. Can you put it? Can you put it in the tortilla? <laughs> you probably could. I think you could. Make you, a burrito. I, I, I believe you. I believe you can. You know. <laughs> Anything you use, like whether it's oils or, or butters or any type of shit like that, um, anything. You so in the beginning, that came out like steak sauce and peanut butter. Did that stuff, they still have that? But I mean, you could put it in anything. You could put it in anything. I mean, I, I did a show called Bon Appetit, right? And it's it was a uh, it was um it was a show. Um, Tom Jones. It, it was a show about um, it was a competitive show about chefs. Some of them that were familiar with cannabis, others that weren't, on who can make the best infused meal. It was on Vice that we did it. I remember and, that. Um, you know, they were infusing every meal. So they had to make us a, um, an appetizer, the entree, and then dessert. In every aspect of it, they found a way to infuse something in there. So. You know, yeah. Do you it, think it could that be your, it could be your salad dressing? It could be whatever you're sautéing the vegetables with. It could be, you know, it could be in anything. Do you think we'll come to a point where, let's say, 
somebody has a cow farm or veal, that you'd be giving weed to the cows and veal to make them like grass fed organic? Because they're already, you know, like that dude one time in the movie I think said, they're just going to create high. tuna with already, the mayonnaise already in it. Like, from, you know, from, <laughs> but so where they, where they can grow the, you know, Kobe steak and that would be veal interesting to get the to get that animal on a diet of cannabis. Cannabis. You know, goats. Go they, they, be right there in the yard. <laughs> they said goats used to love to eat um, yeah. cannabis. Sounds you to me like some, you, all our parties are good. Yeah, yeah. You'd have to be smoking their turds. They have some birria. They have some birria. And, and they're infused? Yeah. Infused just, birria. Like you take it in, <laughs> and your body, you know, after a certain amount of period, it's gone. It dissipates it. Your body pushes it and out. You want to know what's crazy is that on that Bong Appetit show, they had this lady that um, she was from Mexico, but she was living up north. And she was gonna try to that, do. I mean, that's a that's five million people in California, cabron. Yeah, but that was a lady really. that she was from Mexico and she lives up north. Uh, we yeah, just well, narrowed it down no, to. Well, well, she was originally from this part of yeah. Mexico, and she, like, with her family, she moved up north some right. some years back. But what she was trying to do was create her her uh, her mother's recipes in this infusion shit, and she did. Man, um, she did uh, albondigas. With goat instead of ground beef, she she gr did ground goat and infused the albondigas, and they were oh, the fucking bomb. Hey, it was the good. best. It was the best albondiga albondigas I've had oh. ever, and they were infused, and it was goat. It was goat meat. Okay, and I'm eight. just asking for a friend. Where's she at? <laughs> I'll find out. I'll find out. Because I, I, I know they got a they got a, a small restaurant up there. I'll find out where she's at. You know, and you could go try. If shit. if we could do that, it would make going to baptisms less fucking a pain and, in the ass. You, you know what was crazy is ah! that like that there was a certain you part would of, eat first and then go baptize the kid. The, so so the reason she used goat, right? Ground goat mm -hmm. meat was because like. You know, there was there was uh, three to four chefs, right, Pedro? There was three to four. And uh, they all had a race. They had to race to get their proteins, right? <laughs> so the old lady was the last one over there. She was just walking while the other young oh folks are running. And they left her with the goat. So she was like, fuck it. I'm gonna, we're going to ground this shit up, and I'm going to make albondigas. And she killed it. Wow. That's, like, killed that's pretty it. amazing. Yeah. If you could make albondigas that had... That were infused. Psh, they were the shit. Cream of wheat. Mm. Huh? Mashed potatoes. Uh, 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 arroz with that uh, rice pudding, the thing. Uh, uh, flan. Ay. <laughs> flan you infused. Can. They have. I would probably put two as my nipples right there in <laughs> picture. Right? Two flan things. <laughs> They're fucking go. <laughs> I'll cook you one, one cherry. One, one. Uh, man, yeah. I think that, I think that there's a bigger... I think ultimately, I think what they saw was the bigger picture for the future was. Oh yeah, I mean, was this than opposed to pills. Well, look, they, they're well, more appetizing, more, more appealing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and and if people could feel good about doing it instead of like you know most people like I don't want to feel the way I feel when I take these pills because right. you know you like you feel out of yourself. You feel very lethargic. Yeah. Well, you know, I was watching that thing, I was telling Ruben right there, Crimes of the Century about the opiates. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then those pain clinic, medic, pain clinic that would just open up everywhere. <clears throat> and they were they were killing people. Yeah. Because they were just writing prescriptions to get the pharmacies to make the pills, but the woman who didn't need that strength of opiate, but, and the husband's like, that guy killed my wife. And yeah. that wouldn't have happened with this, but. Yeah, she. Yeah, they, I mean, they they created addicts with those opiates, you know, because people can get those, you know, from any quack ass doctor. I mean, and that's what why you see the problem is the way that it is the right fennel, now. Fentanyl yeah. has fentanyl and, always been and, around, and, and you know, no, it wasn't other, around when I was there. The other problem is that some of these doctors, right? They come out of the universities and colleges, and they owe that student loan. The only way they can get out of it is if they go work for a big practice, or you know the pharmaceutical companies come and say hey psh, we need you to use right. this in your practice and they get so much money for that half Dude. the time some of these guys don't even want to prescribe that to you but they have to right and they cannot tell you hey go use cannabis instead because then that is 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 a breach of their contract with these pharmaceutical right. companies so you know they're 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 there to help you but they're dealing death to you at the same time 
and it's all because of the student loan that they get to pay off. And some of them get beyond that, and now they're living that lavish life, and they're just riding that. They're just sucking that titty all all day. They ain't going to let go of it. They're just going to keep writing prescriptions, and people OD, and they're in the car. That picture of the... Two people in the car with the the mouths open, asleep, and a little kid in the back. Like, and some it's, of yeah, it's, it's not safe. And, and some of them don't care that they they've created these addicts. They don't care. They're just getting paid money hand over fist. Some doctors give a fuck, but they're in this situation where they might not be able to say anything because they're all tied into these pharmaceutical companies to some degree. Right. So is the pharmaceutical companies with this now? Because I I can't imagine that they everybody. Would, when le- weed is legal, that the Pfizer's and all those places, they just kind of go, oh, all right. I think they got to be in the business, too. I think they're waiting. Yeah. You know, like tobacco, like alcohol, like every other big industry that that sees the opportunity that they're going to want to get into, and they'll find a way in. Uh, consumers that are, are that make up the industry now – they probably will not buy anything from any of those companies that are backed by ah. by them because they you know these folks these days do the diligence like okay who owns this company and if it's by any one of them they're not they're going to stay away from that brand if if they can find out like okay well who owns this why would brand they stay away from it because they don't trust them because they don't like trust it. them they've let us down the wrong path for so many years yeah yeah they they've they've led us down the wrong path for so many years so many deaths it, it related to all those companies right yeah. coming into this industry where you literally have none you know as it relates to this having some sort of negative impact and you know or, or any side effects other than stupidity yeah Right. <laughs> am, I, am I starting to look like a cat? <laughs> <laughs> you like the one from the play, the big one. You know, look, look, some people make mistakes, right, on on anything or even without drugs. There are just some people that make stupid mistakes. Mm-hmm. And when stupid people get high and there's not smart people around them, they might, you know, cause themselves to be injured or cause somebody else to be injured. We know that. It's, it's not for everyone that can be functional like others, right? But it's literally not caused any deaths in terms of side effects like right. a pharmaceutical would or any other, you know, hardcore drug. Would. So uh, as a or even alcohol or even alcohol. So so the police now, I think their campaign is till they figure out a better one. Driving buzzed is still drug driving. That's yeah. that's yes. them. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. You know, what, how do you? How do you? How would you have adapted for when you pull somebody over that they might be high than drunk? Right. Yeah. Is that another well, test? Well, n- now you have to worry about not only do you have to worry about drunk drivers and and people under the influence of weed or any other form of drug, but then now which we didn't have so much then. You have mad mothers against drunk drivers, so they're monitoring everything. You know what you do before. You know you, you didn't. Think have there's to... a mother somewhere for a drunk driver. Like there's a mom for it. <laughs> there's mothers there, there, drunk driving out there. Mothers right for now. drunk driving. <laughs> no, <laughs> there, there, there's got to be you know mad mothers you know someplace out there yeah. that are against them. But they're they're damned if they do. They're damned if they don't. So if you give the guy that's high a break, and he goes down two blocks later and gets involved in an accident. Well, then you got everybody and their mother against you because you let them go. I don't know what kind of tests they're giving people out in the field now. Uh, if you were a cop, how would you, by speed, or how would you know? You can see someone driving erratic. You say, I'm going to pull that person over. And it, it, it'd be tough because, you know, like there, there are stoners that, that are, you know, highly functional. You know, you wouldn't tell they're, they're stoned. You'd have to smell it to know. Right, like there's weed in the car. I could smell it. That's it exactly. You know, you you stop a car for a vehicle code violation unless they're stupid drunk and they're weaving all over the place. When you get up to that driver, you start talking to him, you can smell weed. You can smell it right away, whether it's billowing from inside the car out or if it's on their breath. Now, people that have been eating stuff, you know, I don't know. because that. Yeah, you can't really smell it. I don't know that you'd be able to smell anything. Unless they farted. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. then, you know, there's got to be some high. kind of probable cause to take them out and do do other stuff with them. But 
can they walk the line a highly functional dude he'd run the line up and back all that yeah stuff. i mean those 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 uh those tests don't work for for stoners this yeah, is, i have no this idea is, what they're what they're doing i now. mean they get they'll, they'll give you a field test the same way as if you know they're you're, they're, you're getting I, I think a dui right um it and it, it just it doesn't okay. work there, there, that there's no way to 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 um you know judge how high this person is by that test it's ridiculous someone may have fucked up balance doing some of those little tricks they <laughs> ask you to do i couldn't pass one yeah so and, goes and over. it's 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 an outdated test and it's pretty ridiculous for for drunks yeah it works because you know if if you're <laughs> fucked up it's it's gonna show with with some of that but some but, people do have fucked up balance but do some people do have fucked up balance and, my, and, and, my mom, and are not coordinated and you have to take that into account. And I think sometimes some of the rookie officers don't know the fucking difference. When I was a, you know? when I was a kid, I was hardly around my mom. And my mom would trip over everything, like a pattern in the rug and fucking everything. So we're at San Fernando Hardware. And upstairs <coughs> is more sports. And downstairs is more of a hardware store. And they had a phone on the wall. And my grandma says, uh, Freda, without, you know, the, the thing. My, my mom, of course. They already tell her to look out for the stairs. My mom trips over the stairs, already going down, reaches out, grabs the receiver on the on the phone, the payphone, and pull and, and pulls the phone out with the wires and everything still holding on to the black thing, trying not to fall from the, the, the handset. And just paint spilled and the thing was fucking thing came over to the guy from the hardware store is not like, hey, ma'am, are you all right? He's like looking at the phone. How the fuck did you rip this thing? She went <laughs> ah! the phone off the wall. They didn't care about her. She went down leg behind her, you know, back over the hill. <laughs> I think it would be difficult to to um, to be drunk and have this. You have to pick one oh, or the other. Yeah, you got to, you know, yeah. People would, drive faster, they're blacked out. I, and would, I would say, yeah, unless you're like a pro at the, both. Yeah. Don't fuck around. Don't mix them. There's nobody that's that good. I, I don't think so. I don't. All this I'm, stuff is all new to me. I, I'm sure there are, are people with high tolerance for both that mix up, but I'm saying if, if you're not, if you're not one of those, don't fuck around. Okay, <clears throat> so let's see. Let's talk about Tiger Woods. So Tiger Woods has had, even before this accident, a lot of surgery on, a, on his knees and his back, um, fused neck. And the first time he got stopped, he was in the car, and he didn't even know where he was going. Hmm. When they when they pulled him over, mm -hmm. middle of uh, somewhere, he thought he was in Orange County, and he th thought he was I don't know what he thought, but he he would have just kept driving. Like where would he was where would he have ended up? You think? Who knows? He would he would <laughs> he was barefoot. Like, when does he come to the realization that he doesn't know where he's going? Right. He was just driving. Because on a flashback, that'll happen. You know what I mean? You'll like end up somewhere. Like how the fuck did I get here? I think it was taking Am Ambien. They still sell Ambien? That was, that was pretty bad. Ambien. I don't know. Ambien was bad, man. Yeah. If it's still out there because of the side effects of. Yeah. If, and if you drink with it, I mean, it's, it's, it's a cocktail for disaster. So I would take Ambien when I was married. And uh, I took a lot of things when I was married. But <laughs> my wife comes upstairs and I'm in a suit. Uh, upstairs completely dressed. And she's like, uh, where are you going? And I said, I got a show right now downstairs. At the, where, where, where are you? I'm in Las Vegas. I got, what are you doing? I got, I got a show. She goes, no, you don't. I said, hey, Ann, I, I, got, a, I got a show. Like, I've got to be down there right now. And I didn't have a show. And I was upstairs, took a shower, got dressed in a suit, <laughs> tied up and everything. Where the fuck do you think I would have went? To a show somewhere. <laughs> you would have showed up How? to the venue like, what are you doing here today? And I didn't even fucking uh, even know. Don't remember at all. I would not have remembered. That's crazy. The side effects, you know, got you like out of your mind. Right. So like Tiger Woods, so like Tiger Woods this one, your friends, with you were a sheriff. The sheriff showed up there. Tiger Woods, this one, severe damage mm -hmm. to his legs. I think that might have that could have happened over there if he yeah. didn't get pulled over because you're going to eventually right. crash. Right. But when you see something as a police officer and it says that there's no uh, skid marks and no sign of breaking, that's he fell asleep. That's what it tells her. Uh, first, first thing comes to mind is somebody falls asleep. Yeah. That that happens all the time. Yeah. Because the only way you see skid marks is if that guy um, woke up. 
reacted to danger. Right. He didn't react to danger at all. So he's either in la-la land or he's asleep. Yeah. Yeah. And people pass out all the time. I mean, you know, it's important to have someone else driving when when you're fucking I passed out and wrecked. Stone cold sober. Just the exhausting hours, long drive, get there. Fortunately, yeah. never hurt anybody. It happened once. Yeah. Didn't hurt awesome. anybody. It, it, it just. I mean, that's that's why for a long time, shit, in the 70s and 80s, you had truck drivers that had, you know, problems with with speed and, and meth and shit like that because they got these long hauls that they got to go on. Mm-hmm. And sometimes coffee just don't do the trick and exhaustion um, plays in and Viverin, remember Viverin? Yeah. And, and and so you know, it's it's no it, dose. It, yeah, there, there's what there there's the, sleepies. The shit that puts you to sleep and the shit that'll keep you up that only works so long until your tolerance is built up to where like it ain't even working no more. You're just killing your fucking liver and your organs. Right. That's that's a hundred percent true. Remember, Jared told me well, something. What about these these small bottles of? Uh, you buy them a five hour energy. Drink? Yeah, yeah. What about those? I mean, no. no the, what could be in that? Then? No, no one's come back with anything about those yet, like uh, of of any crazy side effects. But like, I I don't necessarily fuck with them because they're too sugary for me. A lot of it's sh- a whole lot. Of Rand, sugar. you know how those things work? Uh, I just looked it up. So all right. Vitamin B six, folic acid, vitamin B twelve, sodium, taurine, vitamin, right? Uh, Glucarol. Malic acid, some real crazy shit, caffeine, and uh, acetylcholine. Yeah, see, so the caffeine is the one that, it, that helps you ramp up with some of that other shit, you know? And for me, like, <sighs> I can't do it. Fuck, that's a, this is fucking this big. It's got all that shit in there, all those chemicals in it. Man. Well, you know, there are supposedly vitamins in there with it, supplements or whatever, but it's... <laughs> I don't know. I, I I really don't fuck with those energy drinks so much. Do you think that Tiger Woods has a, is he addicted to prescription drugs? In your opinion, as a as a former police officer? Oh, I have no idea. Do I, I don't know anything about it. What do you think, Ruben? I think he is. He's got to be. He's been through a lot, man. He's, He's got to be in so much pain every morning. True that, because he did have surgeries before all that, like a, a back surgery. Unless he's using some cannabis. I don't think he's. Or, I don't think he's using. But oh. We're going to send some well, to see, him. See is, he still, is he gone to prison yet? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we got to send. Time. We got to send Tiger some good edibles. Over Tiger will be like that too when he's in there. He's not ready for it. He'll blow everybody. Like, hey, <laughs> everybody that plays golf, I'm about to blow you in Tiger Woods. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I got to say, you know, it to me that that's more a sign of prescription pills than anything. Because because can, because cannabis ain't going to just make you go lights out unless you're completely exhausted and you've smoked yourself fucking you know to sleep and he wasn't in that position at that point because he was running from one place to another and it could be that you know because of his back surgery that he's had and he's been more actively playing i mean it's a tough one because it's, it's, it's a tough call you're not he's not an old guy he's like no mid no. 40s yeah and he's had so much break play on the broken leg in 2008 and his back and fused and he couldn't play and he came back but those dudes like Two years or three years ago in the Masters, they were chewing gum. They were chewing CBD gum. Yeah. And they started to, the golfer started to use, there's a video of. Back uh, started feeling better on that swing. Phil Mickelson, <laughs> and he takes a thing out of alleged, he's at the match, he takes the thing out. This is how you know that's probably not legal. So he takes a thing out and he goes like, that, that tells you right there <laughs> that it's not okay to do it because they're going to test you. Because he, before he took it, he went. Well, we try to cover like that. And <laughs> is CBD the steroids for golfers? Yes. <laughs> I don't think Tiger would have won the Masters if he goes. Those guys were chomping out the whole weekend. It's like you don't think they're not using it, they're chewing gum the whole weekend. It's not fair. He's taking CBDs. His swing is better. I got fucking half a back. <laughs> but but I don't know if they've they've used it in golf. I don't. I think maybe basketball. They, I mean, in every sport, they're they using should. it. They're using it. Right? Every sport is using it. Um, you know, you hear more, more and more athletes are are uh, going to that lane. There was a dude that had tape, like uh, yeah, medical yeah. tape, medical tape, yeah. And the tape was infused. Wow. And you put it on your, you put it on your pinky, and and it works, and, and it works. 
Don't try to make your own so, with some so, duct tape so, at the house. So, <laughs> I'm going to dip a, a this cookies. in the alcohol with the weed in it. And the, the little scientist back there. <laughs> but uh, That might work, though. I think it, that stuff, it's everywhere. So now you can start wrapping your wrist or your hand and you, and you feel better. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, the sports tape. They've just found a way to sports infuse tape. the sports tape. Like you see basketball players using strips of it going down. It almost looks like a tattoo when you see it at first, but then you notice it's just strips of tape. And, you know, certain companies have figured out a way to put the CBDs into those, those okay, sports I think, tapes. Okay, I think that if they're going to make guys and they're going to wear CBD, that they should wear tape that's green so that you know that about those infused. <laughs> and you're not they just playing have, some normal things person. came out, yeah. uh, not to defend either side, but those strips that you're talking about. Yeah. I had uh, both my knees replaced, and that was done 10 years ago. Yeah. And they started, he said, this, the, the physical therapist said, this is something new. This the and they the started future, putting yeah. the strip tapes like that, you know, so it looked like a tattoo, looked yeah. like geometric lines on your... And I felt like a pro for a while. Yeah, tell me how and much it worked, you, right? It, yeah, it, it worked. It, yeah, tell tell me how how painful it was. You can't do both at the same time. You want to survive? No, I, did, I didn't do both at the same time. I did it one at a time. And and best I, thing I ever did. The only thing that was painful, most painful thing I've ever been through, therapy. When you get up there, like sit up, sit up on the table, and you get up on the tables and. Sitting there like that, and your legs up there. Well, you just had knee surgery, so your knees like this. This being the top of your knee, it's oh. folded. Mm. And then the therapist gets up there and presses with all his weight oh, to try man. and break it to go back down, and it and it hurt. Oh. And there was a guy on the table next to me, and and the and the guy knew that I was a cop. He said, "Okay, come on, big boy." He said, "Now my turn to get even." So he got up there and he started doing it, and I started laughing at him. And he's pushing it down, and he finished and he walked away. And the guy next to me says, "How could you do that? That's the most painful shit I've ever been through." I said, "I was too embarrassed to cry," wow. because. It was painful. That was the first, the right knee. Four or five months later, I did the left knee. When I did the left knee, I went up there. He said, okay, big boy, you know what's next. I got up there. My, my leg was like that. It was flat. First time up. And he says, how'd you do that? He couldn't even get his hand underneath my knee. And I said, it's amazing what pain will do for you. You already knew what to expect. I knew what to expect. So while I was still under, and I still had it, uh, I was still under the medicinal anti-pain, ah. <laughs> I started working it right away. And I didn't give a shit much, but so when I got up there, no pain. I'm not, not like that, but the rest of it was easy. It wasn't painful at all. Man, that's a, you must have a high threshold. Cause yeah. yeah, I know I have a high pain threshold, but it's the best thing I ever did. It, it, it makes it easy when you have things like that available to you, you know? I think, it, I think the Giants <clears throat> in San Francisco were having a section for people that were they, were they, were they using weed? Like, do you think that, that hey, that would be awesome the, if, if in you know the 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 states that have cannabis legal or decriminalized or whatever, there is a would be a section for them. Like in the Staples Center, we adopted that top balcony. <laughs> we just go there, and it was funny. It was it, it used to be the downstairs section, smoking section where the the VIP parking ah, sat now, right? Right. right. And when 9-11 happened, that whole shit changed. They they took that downstairs space and they made it that VIP par oh. parking entrance and all that stuff. But, it, you know, they, they focused everything now upstairs onto that, uh, I think it's the second, the second yeah. level balcony, whatever. And we started smoking there. It was like maybe 10, 15 of us that, you know, we were all Laker fans that we all somehow got season tickets to the game and we'd congregate up in the smoking section and we noticed that we weren't the only ones smoking weed up there and we were like okay we were always constantly waiting okay when is the 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 hammer going to drop on us when are the red coats coming right. and telling us we got to get the fuck out of here they never did right and this was when when it was still new we had a uh, prop 2 2 16 was it or something like this um they didn't say shit and it built more of a community of smokers there. You see more cannabis smokers than tobacco smokers on that balcony today. Wow. And, and it was funny because oh, then right. the LAPD yeah. starts coming in and people were still smoking. They did not give a fuck. And, and the, the crazy thing was that the LAPD didn't say nothing to no one. They were like, okay, sir, you gotta go. 
you know, they didn't boot no one out. Unless you were being an asshole. If you were being an asshole, you got to go. But if you were being cool, respectful, and you were smoking and, and you were, you know. Are you sure they were LAPD? They didn't go get to what the fuck? Yeah. No. Army surplus. I got an outfit. No, they were LAPDs. And, and uh, wow. man, that, like they never bothered no one to this day. Like, that doesn't go, sound like the LAPD to me. Uh, yeah. But, you know, they I never think, bothered no one. <laughs> I think, what, like, what are you going to do? You're going to bust the whole top balcony of, like, what, 1,000 to 2,000 people in there possibly smoking? You're going to oh, bust yeah. all of them? That'd make some news. That would make some news, and they would look very fucked up, and I would imagine that the Staples Center would be pissed off because that's, you know, 1,000 patrons that they're not getting money from. I mean, they got the initial ticket, but anything else, like in merchandise or – beverages or any of that stuff you're just well they're they're not they're, they're i don't not think there for any that. any agency that you know they're probably brief before they go in there hey don't bother them. yeah don't bother them. unless there's a so, fight it, it, there, there's no reason to bother them it's not that big a deal yeah and no who, one did who is the police officer who came up with hey why don't we get a list of uh the guys who are the felons that we still want and Let's send them a letter saying that the Washington Redskins are inviting them to a game and they'll have a buffet oh. and they get to go to the thing, go to the locker room, and they have to show up at this hotel to get their tickets. And the guy's going to talk to them. They're all on the roof. Hey, everybody. And then he says, we'll, we'll close the doors and we'll bust them. We'll just... It's a, a trap of sting or something. Yeah, oh. it, they didn't do that locally. They, I don't remember them ever doing it locally here, but it's been done, it's and they've had it on the yeah. news. I think yeah. it's a great in Florida, Florida. They did it in That's Florida. A, they were they were finding these guys, like you said, the felons that they wanted to get, finding out where they might be staying or their right. family is, and they would send, "Oh, you just won a fifty-inch screen TV, yeah. blah blah blah. Um, all you got to do is this and that, and <laughs> some of them would <laughs> fall for it." <laughs> <laughs> it's a genius move. It took, it took, it, all you need to do is see it once, and then it's over. You're yeah. be like, hey, man, this is the shit. Yeah. It's like that shit they did in yeah. Boston. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen it, it worked in years, until, but yeah. it, it worked good. Yeah. That, brilliant. The way the, the way the police works. Uh, in uh, oh, in the in the top five, let's say, of smokers. Um, who who are your top five? Because it, uh, in seeing Willie Nelson and. Knowing how much those dudes, mm -hmm. Woody Harrelson, those guys like, you know, and Snoop and yourself. Yeah. Give me the five highly functional. Cheech. Uh, yeah. I they mean, told me, Chong told me that if Cheech eats an edible, he is out of his mind. But smoking <laughs> it is okay. But yeah. some, for, for some reason, the edibles. Yeah. Because it's tolerance. It, it, if, if it's something you don't do, then it affects you crazy when you have some something that's, you know, dosed higher than what you normally take. Yeah, it's going to affect you. And some people are, you know, they don't function well off of it. But, like, the five guys that that, that um, I know, like, that are, you know, they can function off most things is uh, obviously Snoop, Wiz Khalifa, oh, yeah. um, my partner, Burner. I'm, sh I'm sure you've yep. heard of him. Um, and let's see. There, there's so many others, uh, like Willie Nelson. I mean, this that dude was like a king in 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 the in the shit. I think he does more edibles now um and less smoking as he's gotten older. Right. But it yeah. Takes too much energy to smoke. Yeah, it, it, it know, might it right. might and it, you know depending on how active you stay too, you know like physically active um what's the best way to to ingest it? Somebody said burning was the worst way. Uh, I mean, it, it, I guess so because I mean, you know, you're you're ingesting smoke in your lungs, but I mean, you know, it's it's clean. You guys no. want a beer? Hey, you want a beer? One, one, no, one, I'm good. Right. You don't smoke? Uh, you don't drink, do you? Sometimes. I'll take one. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lager's cool. We got yeah, yeah. But but I think people people are, are um, they feel like it's it's cleaner to ingest it. Or drink it, you know, in a tincture or something. Right. Then the lungs. If you don't want to have any so-called lung damage, which you know we haven't seen too many people come up with that. If I were, and I'm not, but if I were, I wouldn't do the the, the smoke because I do have lung damage already. Yeah. And you know they they've oh, cut a chunk right. of my lung. Yeah. On already, so I'd be afraid. Yeah. Uh, to to do anything. Yeah. So like, if you got any problems with your lungs, most of those folks lean towards the edibles 
on right. whatever you know it, it all depends on what type of edibles you like you know how they say if you yeah. if you boil uh vegetables that they lose their vitamins yeah if you smoke does it at some point lose its potency because you're I, kind of burning it i don't think so i don't think so because you're ingesting that thc in your system is you know it gets into your blood system either way it's just one gets in a little bit faster than the other i don't think you could be a smoker you have, you have to be a person that eat because you, you know you got too many latinos around you you know smoking is loud right and if you're a paranoid person or or you're someone that is constantly in thought you know where you overthink things right. just naturally yeah smoking um smoking is 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 a challenge because you know like you're smoking and if you think a lot already it's going to enhance that right and the fact that the smoke is like it, it's like a smoke signal right it's someone can pinpoint where you that they could smell you and they could see you and that'll right. add to your paranoia right mm -hmm. so you know folks that that think like that yeah it's pr they're probably better off doing an edible because you don't get it's a different type of feeling you still get high, but it's 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 not that same paranoid type of feeling because like yeah, smoking weed is loud. Doing an edible is not loud at all. You know, right. it's it's very, you know, intimate to yourself. Right. You know, people can't see the smoke. They can't smell. And you know, you could, any of it. You could ingest. Like I think I had a gummy with these guys. I smoked a little bit. I had half, and then the other half. But you don't have to eat the whole thing. After you take miniature or whatever or pieces. But there's more control in that yeah. than in yeah than in smoke for sure, for sure. You know, um, you could you know, there's people that can take one or two puffs and put it down, um, but then there's other people that want to just continuously smoke that shit so they can't put it down. And you know, that's when it, you know if you don't have a lot of tolerance, you can get really smashed. Whereas this, you know, you know that there's only so many milligrams per per um serving which is i had a sister i still have her i had a sister that was really <laughs> she was going through some troubled medical issues and she just uh told me said how you doing and she just told me she's fine but she had been fucked up somebody gave her some brownie mm, right. and didn't realize that she ate the whole thing she said oh it was ugly that's what it always happens I, I know don't eat the whole thing <laughs> yeah don't eat the whole thing all right I'm not feeling anything. Oh, listen. So if you if you eat a, some cookie or thing, whatever, and you say, I don't feel anything, do not eat more. I'd say wait about 15 more minutes. Yeah. And That's then if, how. And then if you don't feel something, then maybe take another another one or a half of one or something like that. Because that's what people are, you know, are impatient. They want it that fast and it is. that's and and with with uh edibles especially the ones that are you know properly dosed it's going to take some time but it's going to get there but if you know your tolerance and you know how much you could take and you know what it is <coughs> to get you there then you take as many as you need to to get there but folks that are like new to it yeah when you think okay it's 10 minutes and i don't feel nothing wait another 10 minutes and if you don't feel anything, then take another one. But chances are, because that's where everybody goes wrong. That first 10, 15 minutes, oh, man, I don't feel nothing. Yeah, completely. And then they take one or two more, and then they're over the top. So it's important to be patient. Okay, let, let's, let's come up with a scale of, so these are um, <clears throat> 0 0.02 uh, milligrams, right? Right. So per cookie, um, what... What does that mean? In a one to ten, what is O2 is probably hardly hardly any. Yeah, it's like a almost like a microdose, right? Yeah, it's uh, two milligrams per cookie. Yes, yeah, two milligrams per cookie. Per cookie. Yeah. yeah. And then um, there's ten, so it'll be like uh, it's a hundred actually. Twenty milligrams per cookie, and then there's like uh, twenty milligrams per cookie. That dude's all fucked up. Man. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know he was gonna be he had to. Yeah, but I had no idea. <laughs> He probably the other fuck. I hope they don't ask me nothing. Uh, I do. What's the fucking trying to do numbers, guys? <laughs> because you know, there's a lot of things so, out there uh, that look like numbers, but they're they're music. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think what he was saying. There's 20 cookies right in there. 
Ten. Ten. Okay, you better not be a fucking bud clerk. But you better you better fucking lay off fire your first day. <laughs> Ten cookies, twenty milligrams a piece, right? So like yeah. a hundred a, a hundred in total. Awesome. Total. Some people will eat that whole. Get the fucking fuck bag. out of here. Who's that? That guy Ezon? God. Can you imagine, man? If it wasn't so sugary, he could eat that whole fucking thing, right? But that because there's so you know there, there's sugar in there, you don't want to eat that whole shit, you know. There, and there's some edibles that have 100 milligrams in the one serving. So if you wanted that quick punch, these ain't the ones to do. These are the ramp up. You know what I mean? There are like chocolate bars and other gummies that like are highly dosed that you could take if you want to ramp up fast. But these are the slow ramp, you know. Um, what would somebody start with? Uh, like, you could you start know, with like two. You, that looks like you. like I, someone I that, 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 that's new, they could start off with one or two. I know a friend. And you know you're not a police officer anymore, so uh, yeah. you're not under the, the I don't badge, th the thin blue, I, whatever. No, no, no. I, I, I don't want to throw throw anybody under we'll the get bus. Get my mace right you. Somebody friend. very close to me, a friend, got some of the uh, chocolate. Yeah. And broke off a square. And she ate it. And that she girl. said she felt ugly. She hmm. huh. just off once. She had never touched it. it, it but could, I think that's it, a woman. But, but, I think that's a woman thing well, with chocolate. I'm ugly. I'm <laughs> Nobody likes me. I think that's probably just them. Could be. Or that, that one piece, you know, of, of that chocolate bar was dosed with a lot. Because some people, you know, will dose each piece very high. Well, the normal person wouldn't know... Yeah, that's so what we're saying right now. So somebody is just starting. Um, so let's just say you had a chocolate bar this big, <clears throat> right? Yeah. Roughly about that big. Yeah. Someone can dose that whole thing with, let's just say, 500 milligrams. And each piece is 100 milligrams. Okay. It makes up that, that chocolate bar, right? So it could be that you know they gave her something that had too much. She just bit off more than she could chew. Right. That's right. She was gone. That's exactly the right. She right. right. should ask her, hey, how many servings of the thing? Yeah. And, 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 you know, you might not, you might look at it and say, oh, this is just a little piece. How could this? So, but is but, 10 milligrams a good, a good, I think 10 milligrams on those, yeah, for on a that start. thing, Ruben, that, that, those gummies, 10 yeah. milligrams. Yeah, and I was, for, a, for a start, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, for a start, that's perfect. 10, 20 might be a little bit much. 20 but, a lot. But, uh, you know, 10, yeah. For a first timer, they could definitely deal with. Is it like running? Like the more you do it, the higher tolerance you get, or do you always? Well, it depends on the frequency you take it, right? So, like, let's just say you take one cookie per day. Eventually, you'll get to maybe I got to take two to feel it now because you've built up your tolerance. But it may take some time. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> this thing right here. <sighs> I don't, you know, is this I, thing still I, here? I don't do a lot of edibles, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? You smoke, like, right? I smoke more, yeah. And you and you are highly functional. Oh, most definitely. Highly functional. He can he can yep. be high and functional and highly functional. Amazing. All the all the guys on your podcast. Yeah, I've trained them, you know, to be <laughs> top notch. It's like being with the fucking marijuana green berets. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We are well, look, I'm just a private. Those dudes were Green Berets, Special the Forces. Special Forces. SEALs. They do, they do it all. Function. Don't we forget smoke, their place. We smoke more in the morning than most people do all day. All day. <laughs> we'll smoke more by 9 a.m. than most people do all day. They, right. they nothing. No slurred speech. No. What were we talking about? By the time I was already drinking, I like, hey, grab. What were we talking about? Okay, Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee? How the fuck is that talking about Bruce Lee? But, yeah. It's very impressive to see you guys do that because it's i guess it would be like somebody uh the tour de france you well know, i think the, that could make it those old stereotypes you know <laughs> that they used to have for stoners were based <laughs> off of you know folks that didn't okay. want to do shit you know this generation of of smoker stoner oh. advocate um you know enthusiast whatever you want to call them connoisseur um we all are trying to break those stereotypes. You know, there's, there's more for us to do these days. How the fuck and get do you done. come up with Tour de France? I just think they're, they're like highly people. Hey, they don't just ride bikes. These guys ride tour bikes. Yeah. Oh. Where they wear helmets and their oh, shoes man, click into the of, pedals. Think about it, right? In every sport now, there's a world champion that has smoked some weed somewhere along the line. Michael Phelps 
what 16 oh, gold yeah. medals he's a sure. weed head yeah you know um and, and there's we a quarterback have... for usc that uh marinovich yeah he's Todd calling marijuanovich marijuanovich yeah Marinovich. he didn't even want to play football yeah his father made him shit, play. Man. You don't want to play football. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, his father made him. His father, yeah. Yeah. His father yeah. made him play. And he just wanted to smoke some weed. And he got, ended up homeless and. Yeah, smoking too much weed and not doing anything. <laughs> so he got, he got if he'd had some edibles, maybe it would have been better. Yeah, be functional. Right. But look, you got guys like Matt Barnes saying, you know, like that he's he's been a weed smoker through his high school, through his, right. his uh, collegiate career, and all during his pro career. You know what I mean? You you have guys that that are now um, boxers that admitted oh, to, like Mike Tyson was smoking. You know, throughout his career, he never smoked oh. during training camp, but he smoked. He, you know, he was a smoker. I mean, he's he's not one of the guys who just came in and started smoking two now years. Now I understand ago. why he was so mean in the ring. Oh, well, <laughs> he needed to well, get was, some more but, weed. Well, he Wait. told us that he he never fought while he was high or trained while he was high except for one fight which was with Andrew Galata and he said in that fight he never felt more focused in in than any other fight like he actually broke the dude's uh he he I think he broke his uh his the cheekbone and he broke a part of his back with a body punch because <laughs> I mean, he was that focused imagine had he been high for all his fights like that the, because people will tell you they train if they're athletes you know on on that whether whether they're you know beginners in the middle or they're pro athletes that you know b based on their tolerance sometimes it gives them hyper focus like their workouts extend longer that they feel like they can work themselves exactly the way they need to because they're focused on it they're you know when they're not high you want to just sort of get it over with because it's yeah. like a chore instead of locking in and uh i don't think i don't think gil understands because i'm looking at from the side the potential in saying that you could be better on it and you some. It's, you're, some people you don't some. you don't get diminished yeah because you're always looking like you're trying to figure out where you can hey, get somebody in your head. No, no, I'm sitting here saying we could have sold the Night Stalker in a month. <laughs> oh, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, because there was so much misinformation on cannabis back in the day. You know what I mean? Um, so people looked at it like, oh, this is the gateway. This is what starts me off a fucking dark path and, and this and that. And for some, it, it did. But I don't know, man. It's, it's choices that people make, not this particular thing. You know, the gateway for someone is... Their badass friends with badass influences, or their badass parents with badass influences, or the bad choices you make on your fucking own, because there's people with upbringing that, that right. you know they had everything, but they made their their own bad choice. They were their own gateway. It wasn't this or that or them. It was the self. You know what I mean? And, and most people don't ever admit to that. They, they'll always blame it on something else. And you know, so for people to you know say that weed was a gateway that was a whole lot of bad information yeah. and now you know there's there's different information out there and, and you see more and more people you know that are very functional at what they do um locking in you see using it as a tool to lock in they use it for a lot of autism and they use it yeah. for oh yeah 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 i mean there, there's a lot of great usage now and uh you know it's great to see those stories happening as opposed to what we used to see with the right. anti-propaganda. Uh, what's the other one? Tourette's? Tourette's. Well, okay, you know, they can move around. They can move a little <laughs> yeah. thing. They get, and they they get some, straight. And say some crazy still. shit. Yeah. Um, you know he worked on the Night Stalker, right? Yeah. Other thing. Well, um, if Richard Ramirez had been on this, you think it had been... We guys would have found he each was, other. He, to say. he was, <laughs> he was using was. weed, but he was using yeah. But then he started using cocaine. That's when he really started getting um, mad. crack. No meth. No straight coke. No cocaine. So cocaine to the sick. brain made him insane. <laughs> it, yeah, it was crazy shit. How he was going to the Cecil Hotel after some of the shit that he was doing. You know, in bloody clothes, and no one said a fucking thing to him there. Did they? They saw him in his underwear. Well, I, I, I don't know. You said this last time. I, think, I, I don't know. I know he kept his clothes Check this in, out. In, inside the Greyhound bus depot in a locker. 
So I don't know if he was changing in the Greyhound mm. bus depot or he was changing, you know. It it only seems natural for me to believe that he'd go and put on, we call it his kill kit, change clothes there, and then when he's done, go back and get out of them right away anyway. And that's why he stunk. You know, they, right. they, they had this pungent odor. Just imagine. Yeah, he never cleaned them, he right? He never cleaned them. Just right. Water them back up, put them in the locker. But then also, if somebody, <clears throat> a police officer went to the hotel and said, I want to get into this room, and you go in there, and he's not there, but you wouldn't find anything incriminating in there. No. There. So you would go, oh, it's not our guy. Yeah. Fucking A. Right? He had people scared shitless, this guy. That's what we were talking about. Yeah. Where were you on that? So you're, you're probably a little kid. I was a little hour. kid at that point. But I'll tell you what, you know, it, at sooner or later, he, he, he any, anyone that knew anything knew sooner or later he's going to run into the wrong neighborhood and he was going to get fucked up. And sure enough, he did. The thing I don't I don't get, which is still crazy, is that he, I guess he had to know everybody. I don't know if they knew they were looking for him. They didn't know we were looking for him until the day he got caught. So that morning, even with the fear, like I was in the valley and all around here, you know, you felt it. Your parents felt it that. He might strike, and still he did. He didn't say yeah. like, "Oh shit, I'm gonna take some couple no. of years off to this." He still delivered. He was like, bold. Damn, guy was bold. Daring you guys to catch him. You'd know, only had some cookies. Instead yeah, of, instead of the a, real man. deal. <laughs> what do you think sent him on the way? That that his his uncle showed when he did that hurt his wife or oh, killed his shit, wife. I don't know. He asked me. He asked me, "Why do you think I'm I am the way I am? Why do you think I turned this way?" I told him, I don't know. If I knew that, I'd be a doctor making a lot more money than I am as a cop. Hmm. I know. My job is So he asked me. you that? Why do you, yeah. why do you think I'm the way that I am? So did he not know? No, he didn't know. You know, And that's probably one of the biggest questions I get asked today uh, for people all over the world. Doctors, you know, why? What do you think? I said, I don't know. Yeah. My job was just to gather the facts. I ain't no sure. Is it a traumatic experience? You think it's some trauma it's early probably, on or it's, just bad? It's like, probably he traumatic. Says, he, he says he was beat as a kid. Uh, yeah, but that his dad would beat his ass and laugh, and then he'd go sleep in the cemetery because it was peaceful there. And I said, God, how do, how do you do that shit? Didn't that scare then, the shit out of you? Some people are said, just no, born peaceful. with a bad gene. You know what I'm saying? I don't know because that's people's. Was he born like that? Did he get like that? You know, was he a subject? I said, I don't know. My job was just to can gather you, the can facts you imagine and how fucking scared you'd be if you took your old lady to the cemetery to go there be private and you look in Richard Ramirez is fucking laying by, by, by a grave, baby, oh. in all black clothes. Comfortable. <laughs> uh, hey, right? what's up? You need I'd, a cup of give coffee? Me cookie. Give me a cookie. <laughs> give me a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> He'd have them both right here. So, <laughs> but, but he liked the, he, tell him that he, he liked to see the fear in other people. Yes. So yes he liked, he, he got off on that. Yeah. He got off on what the people would look, their faces would look like when they saw him. Man, he's a, a sick individual. You know, when you get off on something like that. So it's fear. Charles Manson. They said when Charles Manson was a young kid, he, he was in school, he got kids to do something they didn't want to do. Which is what he did over there. Like he That's could already what his manipulate power was. people. Yeah. That was his power. Yeah. Manipulation. He's a master manipulator. Right. Some people come along, you know, and, and, and know how to connect with people, whether it's on some good shit or whether it's that. Right. Cult leader, you know, I'm leading you to the grave shit. Jim Jones was another one. Or uh, yeah, Jim Jones with the Yeah. With Guyana. Um some of the some of those uh what was that other guy? Um Heaven's Gate. Oh yeah, yeah. And then uh, Dave Koresh. Applewood. Yeah, and they and all David had Koresh. they all had this 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 way that they talked and be, were able to connect and manipulate people when they found we've had impact with you know with what we're trying to indoctrinate these people with you know and it's 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 a powerful tool man if if you're someone that has that. Um. But how do kids learn it? Like, my daughter would go crazy. We went to a store she didn't want to be in. She'd look around. She'd be like, there's no fucking toys in here. And throw herself on the ground. <laughs> and you'd have to take her out because she'd be screaming. And then when she got out of the car, she'd be quiet. Like she'd Kids, be, she'd kids in a weird way, got a, a, a sense of how you react to this. their, their certain patterns, mm-hmm. right? Like, they know. Like, kids are observant, right? They see another kid crying in front of their parents to get their way with something. And if they got parents that cave in, oh, Maybe I ought to try that. 
Like, you know, it, there was it, a it, female comedian. I want to say her name was Debbie Gutierrez. And, yep. and she used to talk about her little kid, you know, and mommy and Mexicans don't play that shit. Start beating the shit out of her right there in the store. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you would see a, a kid get hit in the store, you'd go, oh, shit. And grab it yeah. and pull it. I, I was there, a car. I think it's maybe a Latino thing. They walked in front of the car, and there was a little bit of some water before you got to the curb. And the, probably the kid was like three walking, and the mom grabbed it by the grabbed him by the arm and picked him up over the water with by the arm yeah yeah they, i mean you won't you won't people don't expose themselves as much as they used to because now everybody's got right. a fucking phone but yeah that used to be a horrible thing <laughs> my mom just used to pinch she just oh. pinch my arm pinch my ear and just say whatever that's got it on right oh, yeah. just wait till we get home and then she beat me when I got home. Yeah, you know, back in the day, you could discipline your kids and not have to worry about if you're going to get reported for that. <laughs> yeah, for you sure. Know? But now you have, you know, the schools, like, their protocol is to tell the kids if anything happens, you call the police on your parents. If you had a kid that was having some, you know, they go like Adderall and all that stuff. If a kid's out there and the, they're giving him pills to focus, would you switch to this? Would you, as a parent, would you say like, maybe the kid? Absolutely. Some... If 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 uh, if it could treat what what the ailment. What if was? I gave one of these cookies to a little kid? Could I go to prison? And probably. That, yeah, that, that, that's never child endangering. Right. Infuse. You're not a doctor. Infuse with cannabis. Yes. CBDs mm, that don't have any THC in it. I mean, I know that there's parents giving their kids CBDs now to treat them for epileptic seizures. And mm -hmm. there, some of them are even using full spectrum, which is CBD with a little bit of THC. And it, it causes... Oh, is that full spectrum? That's what they call full spectrum? Yeah. Both? Yeah. And um, some of these kids have lessened with with their, their seizures and stuff like that. There was a big story on... on this like maybe two years ago so we do know that yeah there's there are parents that are buying cbds for their kids maybe not full spectrum depending on what the ailment is but yeah i mean i i don't i don't believe that is against the law as long as it doesn't have thc in it you know or there's some sort of doctor doctor's <laughs> written thing saying that yes she is prescribed this he or she is prescribed this right um, but yeah, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't give any kids any of these ones right here. <laughs> but you know, it's almost like when Flintstone vitamins came out, that you could give your kid. You know, who thought of that? Let's make a let's make a vitamin look like Fred Flintstone, so the kids would be like, "Oh, I want it. I want to take some of that because it's a vitamin that looks like." Or the gummy bear. Yeah, well, yeah, that that was a, a thing in the cannabis industry um, that. You could not Easier have for a child. You could not have a product that appeals to kids, so that they open that bag or package, thinking that it's a candy or, or something that is made for kids. You know that's why they sort of, you know, put a put a regulation on some of the visual presentation of some of these products to make sure that you know, and that it cannot be mistaken for a, for a, something for a child as opposed to an adult. I think some of those things were a bit of using meth. Some of the some of the medicines that they used to sell even in the store, uh, geritol, or those pills. I think they were like a little bit of speed. Geritol were those like gel caps for old people. Yes. Wasn't geritol to go to sleep though? Or was no, that, no, that it was, was an energy. It was, it was oh, to give you energy. Yeah. Oh, really. Geritol. geritol. I used to take Geritol in high school during baseball season. I'm fucking good, eh? I'm <laughs> Geritol. So that was that was considered okay. So that would be considered a male enhancement. <laughs> that was all about the first. I would be like this. What's wrong with you? Fuck, I'm just ready to go. <laughs> that was good on time, man. Yeah, yeah. That, that was considered the first male enhancement. I I think so. Right? If you turtle look soup. at that's basically we used to say turtle soup. Turtle soup. <laughs> <laughs> would make your have they made one of those for these yet? When a pill like I would imagine they're coming. It's probably a C said they're coming. Probably yeah, a C so would probably I. a CBD cock ring too. Probably. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you wet it like trunks that have CBD in them, and they get wet. It goes in your skin. <laughs> we just.
created a fucking just, billion dollar we just idea. Created something fucking, fucking un- great. Heat bikinis <laughs> and trunks with CBD uh, full yeah. spectrum on your oils right there. Your oil, your little CBD back there. You're fucking swimming. <laughs> Just forever, he's been at the fucking lake. Where's he going? Fuck, I don't know. I don't know. He's coming back. He feels good. He fucking swim up and back and, uh, uh, what's that one over there? Uh, Fucking Havasu or whatever, just swimming Lake Havasu. I think that'll be pretty good. Put on a thong and come out looking like a churro. Who wrote wrote this book? A guy by the name of Glenn... Uh, what kind of shit name is that? Fucking Glenn, man. Glenn. <laughs> Glenn if, I, if my name was Glenn, I wouldn't even fucking answer in school. I would just just be bacon. Eh? I'd wear Glenn. Cow- I'd I'd wear cowboy hats. And Glenn Martin. Cowboy Glenn boots. Martin wrote it. He was a he's a retired LAPD cop. His dad was a Glendale cop. Yeah, it's a crazy uh, cover right there. It is a uh, book on the night that, stalker. That's a crazy. Book. It, it it is a. Pretty much a pictorial. That's Did gun sales oh, go a, up in the city? It's when, a pictorial. Oh, yeah. When this guy a was coffee table book of the Night Stalker. What kind of shit is? Hey, so when he when he was running around, I would imagine gun oh. sales. Oh, went way up. Went way the fuck up. It's called Satan's Summer in the City of Angels. There was that other. There was that other one too. Uh, what was they calling him? But he was much. Af- he was after. He was like. Um, Which one? Golden State Killer. No, nah, he was in Los. I think he was in Los Angeles. Southside Slayer. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Who was a Southside Slayer? He was killing uh, Prostit- uh, prostitutes. Yeah. That they call the Grim. Wait, is that also Different. also known as the Grim Reaper? No, that's another guy. This was Southside Slayer. The Grim Reaper was in South Central too, right? Yes. Yeah. He came. He came after when he was discovered. Yeah. This guy was killing strawberries. Out in the street, out in South Central, Watch and he was using yeah. a uh, twenty-two talk, caliber. For some people who wouldn't know, you know, like Grant with a strawberry is. prostitutes with a cr- crack habit. Yeah, that's what they. That's, that's what they strawberry. So that's you have to go with both. You can't just be. <laughs> that's that's what we call them. <laughs> strawberries. Strawberries. That's awesome. how, how, why? Because. Why do you know, Ruben? <laughs> That's what we call them. Or grapes. <laughs> not grapes or nothing. Strawberries. Yeah, for some reason, strawberries. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. It just sort of happened. I don't know where that came from. Yeah, I don't either. But, you yeah. know, it's just what we called them, you know? What, did he, what word did Gil say? Uh, what? Did he just say wrong? See, he's already hitting me. Where well, you knew the vernacular, the detective. Yeah, he, he said strawberries. Yeah, he said strawberries. Yeah. And that's what, you know, they're. they're Was the Southside Slayer Latino? No. He was black. No, he's, yeah. They never did catch him. I don't think they caught him. They arrested one guy. Thinking it was him. And yeah. Thinking it was him. And one of the agencies, I'm not oh. going to mention which one, but it wasn't ours, they got the ballistics wrong, and they had to kick the guy loose, mm. and it screwed it up for oh. the rest of the case. Man, how come they're not talking about that? Because they don't want to talk about that. Oh. That's a bad ball drop right there. Yeah, so. I mean, because that's like someone who never got caught. Or a war, they might have gotten caught and they released oh, right. someone, but yeah. What years were that? Seven, eight, early Ooh, 80s? 90s, that right? was 90s? Uh, late 80s. Late 80s, late early 80s. 90s, right? Yeah. yeah. Before the 90s, because we had just finished. Yeah, that's right. 80, uh, 88, 89, yeah. right around that I had the, they. I was so pissed off because it wasn't my case, but I was watching these guys and they said, mm. at one time he changed caliber a gun. And they said, well, it's not the same guy. This is a different caliber gun. And I'm sitting there telling them, you know, you didn't learn anything. I mean, right? With with a night stalker thing, you know, it doesn't happen. How about that, dude? Like, if you use, like a guy wouldn't use two guns, like he's only yeah. using one. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, I want to say Ricky Ross was a guy that they freeway, yeah, Ricky, freeway, yeah. Yeah. And so they got him, but they had to let him go, and because, like I said, somebody messed up on the ballistics, and <clears throat> still out. So you don't you don't hear about him anymore. But he hasn't hit anymore either, so it stopped. Yeah. I remember one of the last descriptions of him he, that that someone supposedly saw him. He had like a, a Raiders hat and a gray sweatshirt. That was the last image I remember seeing of him on TV that someone could describe of someone who was in the area when one of these, you know, so they had a persons got they had a, a make. Let's say they 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 had an idea. Yeah, I remember hearing about that. How many people did he kill? Alleged. They had him, at least four or five of them. Man, that's, you don't really become something until it's over ten. Yeah, but who knows? He could have done more over done ten. More. No one right. ever called him. I mean, caught him. 
And and what about the Grim Reaper? I don't know how many did, but there were some both lot, with LAPD, LAPD and our area. And there's still some that are unsolved that could be him, but there's not enough evidence to link him. So it's always when one of those guys talks to their celly if they're locked up. Which is good police work, right? Then they put a cop dressed up as like a... Uh, They've done that. They've done that. Yeah. In the Rosas case, the female deputy that got killed really? in Long Beach, where they... Where they put somebody in there. They put somebody... They, they got a, a TST bus, a regular transportation bus, because they knew the two guys that were involved in it were in the joint on parole violation. So they made a loop. They had to make an appearance. So they got a bus, and they filled it up with about 15 prisoners, but not one of them was a prisoner. They were all tatted, undercover cops from different departments, different agencies. Uh, and the guy Man. that was on board the bus in uniform, like a transportation guy, was actually a homicide cop. The bus was wired. They were wired. They got him down here. And so they brought him down to CJ when they got him IRC. They put them all in cells. They did the, these guys talked about everything. They got it all. And they not only did... Were they able to convict them? They got their mother wow. mm. because she was helping them out after one of the guys' mothers was helping them out after the fact, and so it was a. Why would a dude? Why? Do, what's the philosophy behind? Like you know, somebody's going to talk because they're scared of what can happen, and then you just think as a release for them, they need to talk to somebody. But they think they're t talking to a, somebody they could trust. Yes, yeah, exactly. You know, they just you, you take your chance. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. So the guy that masterminded this thing, brilliant, brilliant detective, good friend of mine. He put the whole thing together. Why you don't want to say his name? Competition? No, no, name? no. Mark Lillianfield. No. Yeah, he, he, he oh, did a... He did... Uh, my wife knew if anything ever happened to me, insist on the department. I want Mark Lillianfield on a case. He, right. He, he's a brilliant investigator. Listen, I don't want to say anything about <clears throat> a uh, level, um, law enforcement in Los Angeles, but in the Charles Manson case... A reporter found some clothes down because the reporter said, hey, how long would it take me to leave this house and change my clothes? And they go on, the guy's in the car and the guy's changing clothes. They go pull over and over the side, they found the clothes down there. But a reporter found it, not hmm. PDAL. <laughs> Shit happens. That. <laughs> but I mean, you know, they're out there. Were there any sheriffs there? No, not at that's not a they, they did. We had one of the cases, but primarily it was the other, the blue, the guys in blue. I mean, they throw the cl clothes over the side of the road. They're there. It's a different reported. style of training for them. You know, when you think about it, sheriffs, they they got to do that. The the two years as deputies in the prisons, dealing oh. with with people, you know, <sighs> dealing with uh, criminals right off top. So when they get in. True? So when they get into the to the patrol cars and they're doing, they know how to deal with someone right off the top. They won't be intimidated as opposed to a LAPD officer who has been through a scenario style training as opposed to, you know, training with with guys like right there on on the spot training how to defuse the situation with the right. felon or whatever. You know how um, the LAPD it, is hiring people now. Let me see. Your, put your arm out here. Right? Am I right about that? Like they they have the the academy You're style. Hired. They 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 have the academy style training, which, you know, obviously right. it's training, but it's not the same as you being in. in you that get scenario. as a deputy, and, and I'm not bad mouthing. I'm not doing it. I'm just saying, as a deputy, you get sent to the jail for the most part. One guy out of the class right. gets to go straight to patrol. He's the honor cadet. Everybody else goes to the jail. And you stay in the jail anywhere from two and a half to five, six years. Mm. Wow. So you're gaining experience in dealing with the other element, the bad guys. And knowing some of these guys. And these right? guys can talk know, you right, right out of your shorts. That's their life in there. They know the business. And you tell them, hey, you're going to be talked right out of your shoes. So that, that's, the way it, that's the way it is. So when you get out on the streets, you have a little bit of this. Right. And you have... A lot of that telling you, be careful. This what you do. So a good training program. I don't think anybody knows that. And and I don't then, think anybody knows that the sheriffs have to go different training. That's why to they're prison for two to six for six years maybe. So yeah. a gangster when he sees a sheriff, a, a, a LAPD coming up, he knows he can kind of talk to him and maybe possibly intimidate a new guy. But when a sheriff rolls up, you know, ain't none of that shit happening. Okay, listen. 
You you just said that, and right now I grew up here. I did not think of it like that. Like that, you guys were so highly trained in the LAPD. Was up in behind Dodger Stadium, uh, you know, running and doing that stuff. The six years in a prison or in a jail is, and then being on the street, you just feel like you're already covered, as opposed to being LAPD maybe, and then you become a patrol officer with the, with another partner. That's got to scare the shit out of people for new officers. Because I don't think you're really prepared for you, you, You're learning all this interrelationship between bad guys and good guys. You're learning on the streets. Most of that is learned in custody and in, in a controlled environment. Right. So when you get out there and you get somebody working with you, telling you now, okay, now this is what you look for out here, you already know how to talk to people a little bit better. Yeah. So it works out. And I'm not... Listen, I know, think that's just a... No, that's uh, a better and, way and, to be. A, and, and that's why, you know, rookies from the LAPD, they go in with veterans to like, you know, right. they're holding their hand through some of this process right. as they're gaining their footsteps in, you know what I mean? And you could see why some situations get a little bit unraveled because some of these guys right. just don't know how to deal sure. with and, motherfuckers and on the street. I think that's. I think that's says a lot about it yeah and they don't know how to negate talk. either department from having no. bad guys inside right no but yeah and and so it is but i think these guys in, are in a case where somebody's been an officer for you know a year and a half and when they pull you over they got they're a little more aggressive or a little more, they're afraid oh yeah. yeah you know what you're dealing with like if you're if you're a person that comes from that life you know what you're dealing with the difference you will not fuck around with the sheriff the same way you fuck around with the lapd now he just said it. Listen, man, he, he, I had just, no, he just I had he, no idea he, about that. He just said it, but it's been wow. recorded. It's been on other broadcasts where you talk to people from the area, and they'll sit there and admit, "We won't fuck around." That's insane. The they may not like neither of them, but they'll give more lip to a LAPD officer, and they will give zero lip to a sheriff because the sheriff will fucking jack you the fuck up. No intimidation. Whoa. On the part you of guys the talk sheriff. before you came in. I had no idea. I've yeah. dealt with it firsthand wow, many a times. That's true, right? Sure. Yeah. I, did you know I've ever been? I didn't know. Yeah, they, they their whole get down, their whole protocol wow. is different. It's controlling the situation. You know, you are not going to intimidate not one of them. And Which are the ones that put flares out? Especially the ones that have had military training before they were sheriffs. Right. You're even more fucked if you try to lip off there. You know that uh, that's the I thing. Have with no idea. You know that's that's the difference between some of the LAPD guys. Some of them are military guys, so they come in with with some different kind of knowledge on how to deal with people. But some of the other guys that are you know maybe former jocks, right? That their colleges didn't make it into the sport they wanted to, but they're fit enough to be a cop. You know, the easier way to get in than the sheriff way is the LAPD wow. way, right? Whoa, and it is uh, just. And they're both great departments. <laughs> but different tactics. Say it again. I don't want to say nothing bad about them. And then you say something but, bad. Oh, Chicano. That's but, 100% but, Chicano. But but they're, uh, it's good. And, and that's the way. You need them work. both. So, some of them within both um, agencies, some of them you don't need because some of them are but not did, good people. Didn't you, but, and, didn't you and I talk about uh, the civil unrest and, and there was a department downtown LA that had uniforms on with no badge or no identification. Oh, yeah. Was that you and I? What, is that? We had a, a, a similar we're, conversation. They're dressed up. I think you might see them either all in black. Those guys were like all in green, but with no markings of any kind. Right. And they would snatch you up and throw you in a van and drive off. Yeah. I don't know what department that that is. Different. Than I don't crash. know what is that like what, a secret menu like a. I, I don't know what department it is. <laughs> I hope they found those people <laughs> because it's a trip. They throw, they did it. They did it in Portland. Like everywhere they show up, just all in black. Yeah, and those might have been homeland guys, possibly mm -hmm. private security. Yeah, that's what they had up in Portland. Yeah, homeland security guys. Did I introduce these guys? No, we just started talking. <laughs> Well, Gil, I love Gil, man. That's my man. Oh, I like the way you. he drinks beer, too. Like, it's because after, he still talks to <laughs> we were at, In the summer, my partner, <laughs> and we were, <laughs> and then that time, 
fucking house. Fucking acid reflux. He's like, you got I got acid reflux. I got a fuck. Hey, you. You gotta get out of the car. And my hero, be real, uh, from the wonderful group Cypress Hill. Who wrote Rap Star? That shit. I did. Did Michael Jackson listen to that song? He should have. <laughs> he fucking still be alive. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Now, I wrote I wrote the the, the chorus and, and oh. my part. Sendog wrote his piece and stuff, and Muggs did the music. Everybody, you know, did their thing. I had the Dude. idea in my head for like five years before I, we actually, you know, put it down. These guys are brilliant, man. But uh, I, I just wish I would have been younger to listen to the stuff that you. I, and I kept telling my wife, I said, but only I was I was gone all last week. And I kept telling him, I gotta call my son. He'll he'll light yeah. me up on this stuff. <laughs> right. I, I, I I'm sure. And now I. I'm sorry I didn't. Oh, no worries. What, what an honor it is never to be too here late. with you. Yeah. <laughs> How did you find the, the, I was looking at the little bit of the stuff about you, that the nasally when you sing. That, that was, uh, you know, it wasn't necessarily an accident, but, you know, I wasn't rapping in this voice in our early demos, right? And it was told to me by Muggs and, wow, you know, like, hey, man, we got to do something about your voice. Otherwise, you're going to have to write raps for Send Dog. Cause I was I was you know pretty decent at writing, at at the least right and uh, but my delivery needed work and so we were big fans of this this uh, rapper named Rem L Z out of New York and he was also an artist like a you know he created paintings and different works of art aside from what he did as a as a rapper. How come I never heard of that guy? Cause he's old school, old school. Like have you ever seen this, uh, uh, that that movie Wild Style? He's in that movie his name is Ram LZ and he has like a couple parts in Ram there LZ. and he did this thing with his voice where one minute he'd be rapping like this and blah blah oh. blah and then all of a sudden he was way up here doing some shit like that right and I you know I thought that was unique no one else was kind of doing that and when <laughs> when <laughs> Muggs told me hey we need to do something about your voice That's I was up. thinking okay let me try what Ram LZ does oh, wow. and in the first song that we did was Real Estate which is on our first album and when we heard how that came out with me pitching my voice up we adopted that tone and started doing it on the other other songs and they kind of worked out and then Send Dog figured out another tone that he could put on top of that to like you know, sprinkle it with something different, and that's how it came up. It was like either come up with the voice or I'm writing the songs. Wow. And, <laughs> and but you, know, you, got, I had but to, you got it. I, yeah, it took me a minute to get used to it too, because like at first I thought you know they weren't gonna like it because it, it was really high pitched and nasally and shit like that, and nobody really was doing that except for maybe the Beastie Boys. They had a similar style right. tone, but. The, the 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 cadence and flow were slightly different and you know we were talking street shit and they're talking party boy stuff so that was a major difference in, in what we were but I took a chance and then I had to learn how to do it live because doing it in the studio sure. was different oh, right. than getting in front of a hundred or a thousand or ten thousand people controlling your voice to, to to do that and it took me like three four years to get that right wow. but yeah, I had to learn to like it. Everybody else liked it but me. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? You like that you want me to rap? Like, okay, fuck it. If that's what's going to keep me on the record. And then I learned to like it and use it to my advantage. Incredibly. It, it well, you know, if you want, ever want to do an album of slow songs, you could just use your normal voice. Yeah. But the other shit, we expect the high. <laughs> I'll use my Kevin Slow Jam right James high. voice. But I mean, <laughs> an incredibly unique sound. And. Uh, and amazing, I remember that shit came out. I was Thank still you, doing, bro. I was still in the clubs, was doing Arsenio, and I would take my music on the road, and it was almost like taking your friends with you yeah. on the road because that shit's like I'll stay in an apartment or a condo all day, and then you. And we, and we didn't know, work. we didn't know oh, you were dude. listening to our shit like that. If we had known, we would have reached out oh. way sooner than we eventually did. Listen, I love Kiss. When they every time they open the show, the show they go, "You wanted the best, you got the best, the hottest band in the world." Kiss, I think that's okay. But who you trying to get crazy with? I said, don't you know I'm loco? Beats that. <laughs> That's the number one. Because when I heard that shit, I used to play in the clubs and the rooms. <laughs> who wrote that? You did? Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah, yeah. That that was, uh, you know, it was a song about being crazy, or or the chorus was about being crazy. So we needed something was... to intro the song properly, and it shows mugs 
saying it on the video, but it's actually me saying it. I don't know why we did it like that, but we thought it would be cooler for Muggs to say it. Right. And then go into Sen and I. Because we were always we were always flipping shit like that. Like so like if you look at Killer Man, right? The video for Killer Man. Um, Can you put it, that up right there? It, it shows Send Dogs. I mean, it shows Muggs doing Send Dogs part in terms of oh. uh, his part in the verse. Like, so there's a part where Send Dog on the album says, I'm ignoring all the dumb shit because nothing is coming from it. I'm not going to waste no time fucking around my gats, humming, humming, coming at you. Sorry that I had to get you. It shows Muggs saying that in the video, but it's actually Send Dog saying it on the album and we used to do oh, wow. shit like that just to you know flip people out you know like are you I, sure or like the jackson five they didn't let anybody else see because they weren't <laughs> they were like but nice but b12s or nice and like well, no one nobody in the jackson five at least the male singers were anywhere near i think the talent level of michael too. maybe jermaine oh, no, a little. Yeah, yeah i mean they were they were good as a group but like he he stood out amongst them you know uh he was different you don't think you're if you, let's say if you were like you had four other brothers, five or four other brothers, and you were the singer. And you go to Alvera Street and people love you, throw pennies, quarters at you right there. Uh, give me a little couple of these. And that your father won a talent show and started to take you on the road. And you said, Daddy, I don't want to sing. You think your dad wouldn't have worn you out with a belt or what? Oh, yeah. No, you're going to sing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to sing right now. You're going you're gonna to put it all on the line right if I, now. If I, had, if I had four <laughs> brothers. But no, I... I'd have been the best. I don't care. I like the fuck. Hey, you're gonna. That's why you should start the shows. Hey, you're gonna fucking sing right now. And then they come out the Jackson. Listen, guys, I love you, man. I love you both. <laughs> Thank you for coming in too and doing. Oh my God, hi. <laughs> <laughs> that's just awesome, man. 